feedback I've gotten wherever I've gone is people have really nice th- yeah. things to say about Mormonism. They're like, you believe in crazy shit, but but you're you nice know, people. every Mormon yeah. I've ever met has been really nice. Wow. They're, they're like, they're, do, do they like obligate you guys to be nice to everybody? <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. This is my first live interview instead of a live stream on the internet. I thought I'd bring somebody into the studio, which I know is still a little bit primitive, so bear with me. Anyways, this is Curtis. Hello, Curtis. Hey, how's it going? (laughs) So, Curtis is going to tell us a little bit about himself, and then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your experience of growing up in Utah and your experiences with the church and how you you went on a mission and so forth. So maybe you could give us a little bit of background to start with. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in uh, suburbs of Salt Lake City. It's called Sandy, Utah. Um, So very predominantly LDS, even more so back then it is now. I think things have changed a little bit, but I mean, it's still the overriding, you know, dominant cultural religious group there. Um, and then, you know, I did do a Mormon mission, like you mentioned, I, I spent two years in the mountains of Guatemala. And then from there, you know, lived out my 20s in Utah. And then I was still single in my mm-hmm. late 20s in Utah. Most, uh, most people get married, uh, you know, early to mid 20s. So I felt like a, a change was good. So I took a job opportunity in Austin, Texas, spent uh, four years there. And then, um, You know, just traveling. I guess a big thing around mission, how I ended up in Mexico, was um, I just really loved the the Latin culture. You know, from my time in, mm-hmm. in Guatemala, and then I was so close in Texas that I'd take road trips down to to Monterey, okay, do some hiking and whatnot there, and just gradually so, explored up from there. What took you to Austin? A job. Okay, so it was a job. Yeah. Now, so I had I had two friends, two coworkers mm-hmm. that worked with me in Utah. And then they started kind of the same niche we were doing in Utah, down in Austin. Okay. So then, you know, I, I was a single guy, 30 years old, visited Austin and saw what a fun okay. city it was. I was like, okay, might as well, right? Yeah. You know, and, and that was kind of the adventure side of me. Also, I took a semester off at of college, back to Latin America thing. Um, I took a semester off in college, started a backpacking trip for four months that started in Guatemala, ended in Brazil. So wow. that spanned 10 countries. So we were on the... Wow. Um, and this was with a couple of people? Yeah, this was with two friends. And how many people told you you were going to be kidnapped and murdered and never come back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, exactly. No, my grandma was... <laughs> Your grandma uh, was worried? ...was very scared of that. And then um, we did get... We were on a bus that got hijacked on the no way, night really? bus. Yeah, we took it... We did as cheap as possible. We never rented cars. You know, our budget for hotels per night was about $8. Okay, so nice. We, I mean, we, we were just staying in the slums. And, and for Mormon missions, I mean, you get, you're get you kind of used to that. You stay... Um, and not so great areas. I mean, yeah. and so well, when, you, when you're on your mission, you're like in a, in a dorm or a hostel or a house, a, yeah, a yeah. host has a place. For yeah. You? Yeah. I mean, any, any, like a couple areas I lived in the church, the chapel, just like a oh, site. Oh, okay. Probably about the size of this room. I mean, wow. Just a, li- just a little, just a little. Yeah. Place. Yeah. Yeah. Very okay. small place. Now, how old were you on the mission? 19, 19 to 21. So you didn't go to college first. You go on the mission first. Exactly. And, and that, is that typical? Yes. Now, especially since they changed the age to 18. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So, so before, like, I remember that famous basketball player went to college, played basketball, and then he got drafted, but he deferred. You know who I'm talking about? Is it was... Danny Ainge or I, I, Sean Bradley? I guess it doesn't matter. Or Sean, Sean Bradley. Bradley yeah. Sean Bradley, yeah. So, so I, I kind of thought people would do, like, their college and then go, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Some, some Most go before college. Okay, so but so, you can still go. So men up to age to twenty five can okay. go whenever. So you could oh, okay. full on graduate college, then go and then mission. go. Yeah, but so it's pretty typical though to go right after high school and then yes. go to college after. Yes. And now is is being is going on a mission something expected of you as a as a Utah male youth? Yes, absolutely. So, so, so if you don't go, what what does that mean? I mean, it's just it's going to be a little bit tougher. Yeah, you know, you're going to have. Just all the question, oh, why didn't you go? You know, uh, you kind of look at as an active Mormon in a Mormon family, um, you're just expected to go as a male. Uh, right. For female, it's just optional. Now, and, okay, and, and, so and if you're, they, go, they if, go at age 19. Used to be 21 in my if you're, If you're, like, say you're in a relationship, high school sweetheart, and you think, okay, we're going to get married. God has planned us to be married. We're in love. 
but I'm going on my mission and you're going to yeah. stay back. Is that pretty typical? Yeah. In fact, yeah. I, I had a girlfriend. So my senior year of high school and so I, was, I dated some about nine months. Uh huh. And then um, I went on my mission. We wrote every week. Every week uh, I get a letter. Okay. Wow. Um, but I mean, you're so young. I mean, yeah. You get yeah. home. Well, I got but, married like, at 19. So yeah, I, I, I got no. home. You know, during the time I was like, okay, this is cool. I think I liked it more for the support. Yeah. And you're just like, because so much happens. I mean, yeah. think about how much you change your first year of college. I mean, sure. you're out of the house. It's, you know, it's, well, it's, being away it's from, your college professors yeah, being challenging away. everything you believe. And then, you know, you're away from home. So she's doing that. I'm, you know, in Guatemala now, like everything, all my surroundings different. Yeah. I mean, so, so much is changing. So a lot of, I know, I don't know percentage wise of what works out. I bet it's maybe like 10, 15% of a couple that when they go on a mission they're getting married because just all the changes. So I got home, it was, mm-hmm. you know, we still kind of dated. She had already started seeing someone else expected. And yeah, you know, I was like, this is all happening so fast. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was happy, obviously in retrospect, yeah. It's happy it didn't work out, but I mean, no, but it, you, it, it was very nice having that support for when, the two years from somebody. When you get back from your mission, your plans are what? To go to college yeah. and, and so be, Mormon, but, Mormon but still be a good Mormon or are you starting to doubt during your mission? Uh, me personally? Yeah. Or, okay. So yeah, I mean, as far as the college stuff, Mormonism puts a heavy emphasis on education. Uh-huh. So, they, so they do, they do want you to go to college. Um, that, that's kind of just and, built into the, the culture there. And, and that is in B, BYU is like the pinnacle, but it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, in Utah, it's not so much, but if you grow up out of state and you're Mormon, okay, there's a huge emphasis to go to BYU because that's going to be like your experience to be around a lot of other Mormons. Uh, okay. Yeah. In state, not so much pressure. Cause, I mean, cause you, you grew up that Utah way. Utah state, right. Utah, okay. and actually BYU puts a heavy emphasis on accepting out of state and international students so they can have that experience you know if you grew up in okay you know if you grew up in say florida you're not really gonna have not you know a lot of good mormon you know situations to go yeah. to college so then as far as back to your question um when i started kind of questioning things i actually started before my mission um which was interesting i i, I went hoping you know i wanted to be a lifelong Mormon. I mean, yeah. life started planned out for you. you. Go on your mission. You come out. You get married. You have loads of kids. You right. know. You, you know. You do all that. You make your parents proud. You make your neighbors proud. You make all your friends proud by everyone doing the same thing, right? Yeah. And so I wanted to be a part of that. You know, I had a great upbringing. I, you know, my parents were were, were fantastic. I mean, you know, it was life was great. Tons of other kids to play with in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, it was good. So it started at a a job in high school. You know, I had a, I had a coworker that, um, was in law school, a smart guy. He's, you know, he wasn't obvious. He wasn't LDS and started questioning, hammering a lot of things that I had never even thought about, you know? Okay. Cause when you're in that society of everyone just believing and go along with the same thing, right? You don't even think the questions, you you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the, and the thing is with any other religion like that, you're taught that any outside noise or information is of the devil, right? You're yeah. just like, okay, if anything goes against our church, I mean, that's that that's Satan trying to, to crack, He's right. trying to crack your faith. He's yeah. he's trying to so say, so say, anything from the yeah, outside is now attacked. It's is like a battle of like, right. of your of your faith, and you gotta you know you gotta hold on in. And um, Mormonism in the Book of Mormon, there you know they talk about the iron rod. You got to hold fast to the iron rod and not, and you know and they talk about everything on the outside. You know uh-huh. is is temptation trying to distract you from you know getting to heaven, getting you know getting right. to the ultimate destiny. Okay. So, so right, well, I, I have a funny. few questions I want to ask you about that, but let me cut for one sec because I want to yeah. uh, just in case it's gonna fuck up the. Just in case it's gonna fuck up the sound. No, you're good. Yeah, no worries. Um. Okay. So we're go- we're still recording. Okay. So so the question I want to ask you is, um, when you're when you, when you're going you've you've gone through puberty and all these changes and your 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 you know your your life is in the world of the internet and TV. You know, there's a whole giant world that's not Mormon, right? Right. I mean, obviously. Yeah. So, 
how does that does it feel like being in the minority that oh that that's a special thing for you like oh hey we're yeah we're like God's chosen people everybody yeah. else is on the outside yeah we're God's army I mean we're we're we're, we're the chosen ones we're so lucky to have the truth See, right and yeah and, and that's what missionary works for I mean there's an answer for everything you know try and make sense you know of course you know in it you're just like okay yeah like like yeah. you know God's blessing us and and honestly you know a life lived with such discipline i mean gives you pretty good results right i mean you have yeah. these, these these family where like i said heavy emphasis of education without distractions distractions right. of alcohol without drugs i mean you're sure laser focused with this promise of like okay eternal life you know living with god and happiness and your All whole right. family's gonna be there um so it's just this beautiful picture i think i think the natural man we 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 want something well, sure. more than this life and you know yeah, right. and if you dangle this you know this the, carrot that, 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 that if you just live you know such this this great life that there's this great reward at the end and you know then that's motivating right yeah you know and so um yeah i mean it's it it works well you know it gets it gets mormonism gets the most out of people as far as you know it's a great society too i mean i i make the example you know growing up Every Saturday, I was helping people move in and out, you know. In Utah, you don't hire movers, right, you know. Yeah, You're like, yeah, okay. the, the Mormon community shows up. And does stuff, yeah. Does the work for you, you know. So these kind of things, you know, you move into, more, in Utah, one of these neighborhoods, I mean, you have cookies at your front door. Hi, yeah. you know, welcome. You know, they'd love to convert you, you know. Of course. More than, more than anything. But, um, yeah, I mean, genuinely, they're, you know, they are nice people. And, you know, when I got to Austin, I remember... You know, I'm trying to get my mattress up the stairs. People just walk past me. I'm like, oh, I'm not in Utah anymore. Nobody's I, nobody's nobody's, uh, <laughs> nobody's uh, stopped to help me. But um, anyways, so um, yeah, so it's just so, so, yeah, so, so you know about the outside world, of yeah. course. But I mean, you're just you're in Pleasantville. You know, you don't really leave. Yeah. You know, and and that's the thing. If you leave Utah, when it we go to church. You know, on vacation, we go to California. On Sunday, we'd go to church. You find, you seek out right. your own kind wherever you go, right? Yeah. And it's so, just like, you know. So that, so tell me a little bit about this. This You said it was a co-worker that, that wasn't a Mormon, okay. and he, he asked you some questions? Yeah, I mean, he was a former Mormon, and, okay. you know, he'd done the deep dive. And I think it started along the line of just creationism, you know. Oh, okay. So, so you was, were working with this guy. Yeah, and, you, and, I, was, and I was a naive 16, 17-year-old. I okay. knew nothing and about he was how, I just he, he was much older? Uh, he sees law school, didn't go on a mission. I was probably about 23. Okay, so he had realized there was some stuff, some problematic things. Yes. And he had, he had walked away from the church. But you still, I am assuming you still found him to be like a nice guy. Like he, oh, yeah. He wasn't like, oh my God, it's the devil. Yeah. And so did this spark your curiosity? It did. It did. So I didn't do, I, I had the impression that, or I guess I just left it as when I go on my mission, mm -hmm. like God's going to confirm everything that Mormonism is true. So okay. I, so I had these doubts. I was like, okay, this doesn't make sense, but, but don't worry, Curtis, once you're on your mission, <laughs> It'll, it'll get, it'll yeah, be all these doubts will yeah, be yeah, because you're away. doing God's work, right? Exactly. So I'm okay. like, okay, this guy has some good points. Doesn't really add up. Doesn't make sense. But I saw like my brothers go on missions and come back so like fortified in their faith, you mm -hmm. know, that that this is right. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna end up like them. Uh, okay. No matter what, you know, God's gonna, you know, I'm gonna dedicate two years of my life. God's gonna confirm. You know, right, like because you're, you're, you're putting your whole yeah. heart into it, so God's going to yeah. show up. Now, now, I have a question about that. Does where you go on your mission have a big effect on how you leave the mission? Like, I'm assuming if you go to Guatemala, it's a much different experience than going to Paris, France. or Yeah, exactly. Right? So I think... You know, Latin America, people are more receptive. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're more humble. Um, and just people who put a heavy, heavy emphasis on education intellectualists you know they're not going to be as receptive yeah to you know to well because i always found it strange religion, yeah. i always found it strange that 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 mormons felt sending you know young pimply faced boys to a door to tell like an old man yeah, exactly. how to live his life right. it's like okay even if you have the truth why would i ex why am i gonna listen to an 18 year old kid that's yeah. barely out of high school tell me about life to me that always sounds like 
Like if you re- if you really wanted to convert people, send me the, a guy that's seventy years yeah. old. Right. Well, it, 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 it's the same thing. I always thought it funny as like the financial planners, like out of yeah. college, like going to yeah. someone's retired. Like, yeah. Okay, you know this is how you need to manage your money. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I got a degree from college. Right. I forget your forty years of and, experience. Yeah, yeah. And I'm and twenty-two so I was years old. Those guys, because I'd get recruited for those jobs. Yeah. Just you know, they're like, oh, you should be a financial planner. <laughs> And I'm like, how am I going to walk, you know, like... Yeah, no, like, that's insane, I right? managed my paper out money fantastic when yeah, I was 12 yeah. years old, you know? <laughs> Look at how I was able yeah. to, you know... Yeah, that's, it's, it's crazy. It so, is sort so of mind kind of the same thing as religion, you know. Um, but I take it because luckily, you're, you're an American, that makes it, that gives you a curiosity factor, right? Yeah, and so I think even... But the, also the thing is, in Guatemala, you got to understand, is there was such... A fascination with religion. Okay. Like in these towns, like every three houses was like a, a, you know, a Protestant church. Okay. And they slam the organ, play the organ till midnight every night. Wow. I'd walk by, there's people passing out, wow. like rolling on the ground, oh, saying, like you know, yeah, say, say, saying the spirits carrying away. Wow. So there was just such an excitement about religion. Okay. Because that's, there, let's be honest, there wasn't really a lot going on in these towns besides sure, religion to get, you know, I mean, they're, it's either you know, bars or churches. Yeah, unfortunately, right? you know, very impoverished. Yeah, you know you and then and a lot of these. What was fascinating was market day. You would see just a ton of men passed out unconscious in the in the market square. Yeah, they were literally drinking rubbing alcohol. Oh, man, it's so terrible. you'd see these plastic bottles scattered, and oh, so like man. it's just you know. So then a lot of men that so the women especially and the kids took upon interest in religion because. You know, it's just, it's just what it was. So you'd have a lot of people that were open to interest, you know, open uh-huh. to listen to us because of that. Um, and so, yeah, depending on where you go on your mission, you know, your well, experience. Your experience, experience, experience right? Yeah, I mean, my friends that went to Germany, for example, probably taught very few lessons. Whereas me, daily, it was normal for me to teach, oh, you know, okay. several lessons a day. Because people were just willing to yeah, listen to Yeah, people were listening to them. That yeah. doesn't mean they're going to convert. I mean, on average, I'd say in Guatemala, I've baptized maybe one to two people a month. That's probably about, you know, yeah. part for the course in Latin America. Um, Mormon missionaries that go to, say, the United States or Europe are probably one to two a year. Okay. So it's a lot more yeah. work. Yeah, exactly. So, so do you think that great that that grates on, on people? Like, in other words, not having that success makes them doubt God? Um, or... No, because I they go into it knowing. knowing I mean, they have not. the people that are already there telling me, "Hey, look, you yeah. know, like it's gonna be you're tough. gonna plant that seed, and then that guy's gonna get married, and then he's gonna have generations of kids that will all be Mormon. So even if you don't baptize anybody, maybe you touch somebody's heart, and then and then downstream, downstream, oh, yeah, okay, something will happen. Right. It, it's just you know. Well, there's always a positive spin. That on hope, everything, exactly. Right? So right. I mean, good okay. for them to be able to. Have an optimistic attitude. Two years getting rejected, and shut down. <laughs> yeah, that seems I mean, like that seems like a sales job where you yeah. get no constantly. Exactly and right. And you're like you're like not making any money. You're no, like, exactly. why am I doing this? Yeah, it's like, okay, it, that, you're exactly right. It's like a sales job where you have no success so, for two years. So, so tell me, tell me a little bit about in 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 Guatemala. You're you're constantly talking to people. Obviously, your Spanish is getting better. Yeah, and you're probably meeting some very nice families. Are you also having some doubts and depression and and like, what am I doing here? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So back to what we're talking about with the doubts, um, where I was going to get this huge manifestation that, mm-hmm. you know, God's real, that, you know, Joseph Smith was a prophet and all this stuff. Because there's a promise, and it's well known in the Mormon community. Once you read the Book of Mormon, there's a promise at the end. If you pray about it, God will confirm to you that it's true. Right. And this is like the burning okay. in the bosom. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah. The you'll spirit, know that you spirit, know. Yeah, the spirit will come down and just, you'll you'll just know, right? Yeah. And so, in the first two months, it's a missionary training center where you go learn the language. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, the, the, you know, the basis of Spanish, which is amazing, you know. Yeah. They, they teach you so well. Um, and then, at the same time, I was reading the Book of Mormon. I was like, okay, I'm going to pray about this. So, right before I left Guatemala, I prayed and I was like okay I want something that's not just my conscious or right. my family or something you know pre-existing whatever to confirm I want God's comfort hey, I prayed about it and I yeah. felt nothing okay now I'm like flying you know just out of high school now I'm <laughs> right getting dropped off in this foreign country and it's and it's not a vacation you you get dropped off my first companions from Honduras knew no English 
Okay, uh, I'm in a you know a town. No one knows English as well, so it's either you learn Spanish very quickly because when you get there, you, you realize, okay, my gringo Spanish teachers. No one here sounds like that. No, of course so not. So I don't understand anybody. <laughs> right, so now, you, don't know, you don't know the slang, you don't know... So I, that's where yeah. it's very tough, I think, for, say, 80% of Mormon missionaries that have to learn a foreign language. You get there, you're very discouraged. Yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, they've changed a lot of the rules to make it easier. You Wait, you're, you're not taking Spanish in high school then? I did. But oh, you, you did. So you had a little by, bit. By the first week in that missionary training center, you already passed what you learned in high school. Okay. It, it's, yeah. it's six hours a day, just boom, 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 oh, boom. Oh, okay. Um, and so, yeah, it's demoralizing, even more so for me, because I'm already questioning this and I'm not yeah. the only one. I mean, there's plenty of others. Sure. Um, and so it's hot, it's humid. There's no, they see I'm on the coast. Um, yeah, I mean, I was coddled in this, you know, my nice middle-class home in Utah. Now, you know, you're, you're, you're kind you of open like, the fridge yeah, and yeah, there's yeah, wherever yeah, you yeah, want yeah, yeah, and exactly. your mom's making cookies. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's tough. And then. So, yeah, and then I had the dilemma. I'm like, okay, I didn't get a confirmation this church is true. And so, yeah, I mean, it's tough. So it's very tough. So, I mean, I was just pleading with this God. I'm like, give me an answer because I am here. I'm a lonely. I can't yeah. talk to anybody. Like, please give me an answer. This is true. Um, nothing. I still felt nothing. And I'm like, I'm like this is... I mean, this sucks. I, everyone in my, all my friends, family, they got this confirmation. It's true. What, what's going on? I've lived worthily. I, you know, I didn't watch radar movies. I, I did everything right, right? Yeah. Um, there was nothing that should have impeded me from you getting this answer from God. You weren't secretly wa uh, yeah, listening yeah, yeah. to, yeah, exactly. li listening to bad rock and roll music. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. Something. So I'm like, okay, I should be getting, you know, this confirmation. I wasn't, and then I like. Three weeks in, I just kind of had a breakdown. I was like, look, to this Honduranian companion I can mm. barely talk to. It's like, I don't, like, I can't go home. If I get home, it, go home, it is like a social shame. Oh, for sure. It's like <laughs> embarrassing because yeah, yeah. I know because I looked at those guys in my neighborhood who came right. home earlier. Like, oh, what was this problem? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what a wuss. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't hack it. You couldn't hack it. You couldn't hack it. And you let your parents down. Yeah, yeah. You let everybody down, you yeah. know. So I'm like, I'm like, going home is not an option. Yeah. Okay. I mean, either, it's either... I figure out this is true or I figure out this is true. Like this, yeah, this, yeah, is, right. this <laughs> is it. There's no faking it either because yeah. there's no one who's going to voluntarily, you know, go knock doors 12 hours a day if you don't have some sort of conviction yeah, yeah, that that's... this is true and right. So then anyways, he was a great guy, guy from Honduras. He was just like, look, you know, it was like, read this scripture about faith, you know. And, but this is like an older guy and experienced? Uh, yeah, he'd been in mission for a while. And okay. he actually, he was one of those guys that went on mission older. He was like 25. Okay. So he's like, you just got to plant that mustard seed of faith, you know, in the mm -hmm. New Testament and just, um, and just faith, you know. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to hope, pray, and have faith, right? So that is it. I'm going to just cast away all these doubts I have, and I'm just going to boom straight ahead mm -hmm. and not think about anything else, right? right? Just just go all in. And right? you know... And, if, and, 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 and you... if I go all in, then I can just be happier, mm -hmm. go with it, and, and let's just let's just do it, right? Let's just, let's just go all in, and then maybe at the end of these two years, I'll end up by my brothers with just yeah. this incredible testimony that this is true. And then, um, and yeah, so that was, that was my plan. That was my plan as more missionary. And, and I just dug in and, and, and went for it. And I think at the same time, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make the most of it by service as well. I want to just help these people. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, you know, there's a lot of good things with more mission. So I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to focus on just sort of, you know, helping people build houses that way. Okay. You know, if it comes down the road where, okay, maybe this is not all true, at least I left something good in this country. Right. You outside know. of theology, right? Right. You were helpful to people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that could, I could make, you know, feel good. And, and in, in, in this time, I'm assuming you, you know, in your heart, you're being authentic about your search. Right. Right. So there's, yeah. there's often this pushback from people who look at somebody that's deconverted from any type of religion but specifically in any Christian form where they'll say, well, you weren't genuine or you weren't really seeing. Yeah. And I think that's very unfair coming out myself out of that. I knew I believed, and I can tell by what you're telling me, you, you believed and you yeah. wanted to believe and you were a true seeker. 
Yep. Um, now, th this you're, you're telling me this is in the very first few weeks where you're really having these doubts yeah. these, and this thing. How long did it take you to, to reach some next level of conclusion or thought? Uh, did you get happy and just accept yeah. it at some point? or? Yeah, I did. I did. So I, I went through, I mean, the doubts would come creeping in from here and there. I mean, there's no, there, there's no question. I mean, there, there were legitimate issues with, with, with Mormonism. Right. And so you fi so I finished out the mission. Um, just like, like I mentioned, great yeah. experience. It was awesome. I have zero regrets about it. And this is two years straight. You don't yeah, have to go and then, home. And then, and then, yeah, right? this is, yeah. You, don't, you don't like go yeah. on vacation. Right? Yeah, you talk to... So this is the thing. So you talk to your parents, your family twice a year. Um, you send a weekly email. So that, that's a contact. It has now changed to where you FaceTime your family once a week. There's a lot more communication with, with your family now. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So that's how, that's a way to create a little bit more support. Exactly. Because that's pretty hard if you're leaving home and yeah. you're, you're like, oh, you got to talk to mom once a year. That seems a little right. harsh, right? Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> and and there was honestly, there was honestly guys going home with anxiety, depression. You know, I can't judge them. You know, back then we did. We're like, oh man, what a loser. The, um, you know, so-and-so yeah. couldn't hack. He had to go home. But looking back, you're like, okay, that, you know, you don't know everyone's family circumstance, yeah. right? And so... Um, looking back, I was like, yeah, we're probably a little harsh on those, on those guys that, uh, you know, went home early. We had no idea what, what they personal were going situation. Through. And honestly, yeah. you know, in some sense, maybe they're like me where they're like, okay, I don't, I don't believe in this. So we'll, yeah. why, you know, I stay, um, whereas, you know, I can't say I didn't believe in it. I, I kind of forced myself to believe in it, but yeah. then fast forward time, um, I stuck around. I think you get used to doing something, you mm -hmm. know, so I still went to church, did all that, but I mean. I just started doing more research, you know, okay. I think the biggest things for me was just the Mormon history. Okay. Um, reading into that and just a lot of things that didn't sit right. And with this me. is back living back at home. It, yeah. Back in Utah. So fast forward, I get home from a mission. Everything's good. You know, all my friends and family are really, so it's really easy to, to go along with it and keep yeah. going. Cause everyone else is doing it, especially we were up that, and and granted, I did have a lot of friends in high school who were, like, I guess, non Mormon or 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 didn't go to church, right? Yeah. Um, so I did have those friends. Of course, for them it was easy because usually their parents, you know, didn't go either. Um, and but for those of us who had very active mom and dad going to church, grandma, grandpa, yeah. cousins, you know, I'm a I'm. A descendant of Mormon pioneers. I mean, okay. so it goes way back. Right, you're, so you have a big long history. It's, yeah, this, very yeah. long history. And it, it, so, th and that, and so that's another pressure to keep you in it. You're like, okay, yeah. if I leave, you know, you're going against all this work of generations. Yeah. You know that were troopers in this. You know, in in God's work, and yeah. You know, in 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 pushing for the restore have, restore have, Jesus. You know, have you done the these uh, genealogical kind of studies little, like where you know you're yeah a little bit and, that, and that's actually kind of cool i mean mormons yeah. are really good about tracing back their history mm -hmm. um and, and seeing where they came from um uh, maybe a topic for another day is obviously that they do gospel ordinances for the dead right right so as a youth i would go and be baptized for people who have since passed so you would be like in place of Right, because yeah. Mormons believe all those ordinances need to be done on another. So, so every day in a Mormon temple, there's ordinances being done for like, somebody else on behalf of somebody else who's died. So you're baptized on, on and behalf. And this is part of why the genealogy is so important. Yes, to because you want to get their the work done. For... No, no. Okay, let me tell you my perception, and you tell me how off I am, because I know a lot of times people have weird perceptions. My perception is that that the the Mormons believe there's like different levels of the afterlife. And if you're say yes. baptized, if you, if you substitute yourself to be baptized for somebody else, that gives them a different position than if you're like, you're living a really good life. You have a wife and 10 kids and you, you live an exemplary life and then you get to heaven. You, you have like a different level. Is that, is that understanding somewhat correct? Or? Yeah, no, that's actually pretty, pretty, you're, you're on the right track. So, yeah, Mormons believe in three degrees of heaven. Okay. So, it's celestial, terrestrial, and telestial. Okay. So, celestial being the highest. Those are the ones who pay their tithing, who go to church, go to the mm. temple, you know, keep all the commandments. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't commit adultery. Those are like, you know, those, that is your 
Mitt Romney. That is your, yeah. you know, that is. Yeah, so you're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, th- those are people who are are living, you know, exactly right on, you know. In, in, in and I'm gospel. assuming that that puts some social pressure on. People, oh, absolutely. People to to not slip up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, imagine, and that and that was the hardest internal battle for me because let's face it, Mormons, including my parents. A lot of having a lot of kids is building the kingdom of God, right? Okay. So uh-huh. Mormons believe that you have all these spirits up in heaven waiting to come down. Oh, uh, okay, right. To, to, to they need a, bo- they they need a body. They need a body. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is, so it, then, is it true that, is, it, is, more, is this true? My understanding of Mormon theology is that a soul that comes down to earth has some say in it, like that gives some consent. No. Or is it just completely random? Yeah, so I don't know. Like? There, there's some talk in Mormonism that if you were if you were very righteous in the pre-existing life, like you got a body, like basically in a Mormon family. Okay, you get a better... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Because you were so good in heaven. And so that's another way to kind of just manipulate. You yeah. Because it's like, okay. oh, you were so good in heaven that uh, we got you a Mormon family that has... You so know, you get all a better the, start. Yeah, it got, has all the truth, you right. know, that you need for life. Okay. Um... So anyways, that's what's hard is because now um, if you leave the Mormon church, then your parents, the rest of your family, it's like, okay, poor Curtis isn't going to be able to be in heaven in the top, you know, level with us. Because he's, he's mess- left. Yeah, he's- so we're never going to be able to like really fully enjoy happiness with the whole family because so and so left, so and so left. Right. You know, and and most. But, no, but where, so what? Where do they believe? You, like you've been baptized and you yeah, believe. Yeah. So do they? Are do they believe you're like going to go to the second level or? The yeah, third, or, probably, probably. Yeah, they're, they're probably optimistically <laughs> like the second level, okay. and, and so even the third level isn't bad. So, you know, a lot of people Mormons and talk about uh, Joseph Smith, the prophet said even the the bottom level is I think it was ten or a hundred times better than Earth. So even okay. so even the bottom level. So it's celestial, terrestrial, telestial, but then there's outer darkness. So if you like commit murder, you're not getting telestial. Oh, okay. So there is still like a more There's still like a hell. hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're really a yeah. bad person. Yep. Yep. But you but that but what if you're a very good Muslim or a very good Hindu, then you go to the ter- terrestrial level? Yeah, so that's a great question. So Mormons believe that that person who lived another religion mm-hmm. will get a chance to hear Oh, okay. Basically, Mormonism in the next life and accept, okay. you know, the restored gospel. So this is Jesus similar Christ. to uh, purgatory and the Catholicism. Yeah, it's stuff. yeah, it's, it's like, like you get a chance to develop. Exactly. So as soon as you die, you don't go to one of those three kingdoms. As soon as you die, you either go to spiritual paradise or spiritual prison. Although it's not like a prison, you're basically mm. waiting for your ordinances to be done on uh, earth or the second coming, which. You know. Okay, so it gets super complicated. Yes, yeah. So but there's, that, but, 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 but basically, there's... basically, everyone gets a chance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whether I, I, on Earth or, or later. when you're dead, everyone right. gets to hear a chance to hear. No, but but if you're a really bad person and you and you've really rejected God and you've committed, say, murder or something, you don't get any more chances, or is there a chance? To, uh, or is that a, is this a doctrine that's in yeah that's, that's a great line I don't I'm not sure okay. yeah I don't I don't think you get another chance but I don't know maybe you do yeah yeah knows. yeah maybe okay you do. Yeah. all right that well that, I mean I I will say that's a lot more compassionate than say Calvinism I don't know how familiar yeah. you are with Calvinism but Calvinists basically think God chose some people at you know ahead of time elect and everyone else goes to hell yeah that, that that's what like that yeah. so I would say it, it sounds like Joseph Smith came up with a more palatable version yeah. of more all inclusive, yeah. Yeah, it's like okay, it's more a yeah. little bit more reasonable. Everyone gets a, yeah, everyone gets a chance. So yeah, no, I mean Mormonism in, in itself, I mean it, it, it fills every gap, right? Yeah. It, you know, it it and that's why, you know. Let's talk a little bit about um I, I'm a little bit curious about the the history part cuz you indicated that you yeah. The, the history was what first kind of put a crack in your your faith or your belief, and then yeah. doubts came in. Can you tell me a little bit about what those were and how that affected you? Yeah, so it's just because you get obviously, you know, in, in a religion like that, it, you get every spoon fed all the what's the word like, um, like you mean doctrine and yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, history I'm, their and, side of things, right? Okay, right. The one-sided... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the one-sided history of things. And so you kind of just digest all that. You're like, okay, this is amazing. You know, this is like a, you know, a Disney movie. Like Joseph saw amazing, 
you know, God and Jesus. Like, of course he did, you know, in the Book of Mormon. So, and this was the thing. Growing up in the 90s, the internet's just starting to come out, right? right. Yeah. So it's like, so it's very easy for the church to keep everyone kind of in line, not questioning anything. Because in that time, you really had to go to a bookstore and seek out. And seek out something. Seek out the opposition. Anti-Mormon. Exactly. You, you, You had to go. And seek out the opposition. So, yeah, you went along with it. You know, you went to Temple Square. You saw the movie Legacy. You have Joseph Smith and his wife, Emma. It's this happy life. And, you know, and, and everything. Following like every prophet living, a good, you know, just a great, amazing person. You know, and so, you're like, okay, this is awesome. And then, of course, the internet comes out. And you find out, you know, from pretty good resources. And, and this is the thing. You know, people that are still in trivia. Oh, well, well, Curtis, you just believe everything the op- you know, opposition said. I was like, no, like back to my point, I wanted to be a lifelong, sure, sure, active, happy Mormon. I yeah. really did. Yeah. Well, that was my plan. But too. When, I, I yeah. wanted to go to Bible college yeah. and be involved in the church my whole life. That but, was my, that was what I did. But when you have so much evidence from so many different sources of, of Joseph Smith, just his life is a treasure hunter. Yeah, you know, okay, this treasure hunter now found, you know, God led him to, yeah. you know, how convenient, right? Right. You know, these gold plates. And you look at just Mormons and any other religion, it's like, okay, what does a man want? He wants in life. He wants power. He wants money. He wants women. Yeah. Starting a church pretty much guarantees you <laughs> right. all three of those, especially once he instituted polygamy. So that was yeah. a big thing. You're like, okay, Joseph Smith had how many, 38 wives? Yeah. You know, Ranging from ages fourteen, I'm like, okay, why didn't why was this? I went to church every Sunday for three hours. How come no one touched on these kind of things? Right. You know, kind of Brigham Young, a lot of the crazy things he said, you know, that were you know fairly yeah. racist and you know, and uh, one that was so I guess two things that really made it tough for me was that black people could not receive the priesthood until 1979. Mm-hmm. And then I guess polygamy, right? And so Mormon's version is that God decided, okay, we don't, because both are now, you know, the blacks can now, of course, receive the priesthood as of 1979. Yeah. And polygamy was abolished to in become, 1896. To become a state, right? Yeah, Wasn't that part, state, yeah, it was exactly. part of the negotiations? And with so the that, US yeah, so that's, yeah. you know, and um, so that gives you some doubts about the fundamental truth of your the right. founding of Yeah, Mormonism. so then I'm like, like, why would God want black people excluded for so many years? You know? Right. Or, or if he did, why would he Why yeah. would he say in 79, let's change it? No, and it why was not? a civil rights movement, and well, they were pressured to, because right. well, BYU, they, you know, yeah. BYU is about, I, I can't remember all the details, but um, in both instances, the church was pressured to make a change there. Yeah. And it was just so convenient, like, oh, God told us now that, you know, we're no longer doing polygamy and, and now right. black sound priesthood, you know, which which both things should have happened, you know, well before. Um, and so I think those were two big ones. I mm-hmm. think those two are very difficult, even for active, like believing Mormons. Trust me, there's no like Mormon that's like can like. Be like, oh, okay, that totally makes sense. They struggle with it. Yeah. I mean, now, that... now, what about the Missouri Mormons that, that still practice polygamy? Um, are they considered a, a cult of Mormonism and, yeah. they're, and they're so frowned yeah. on? Like, no, that, they, these, those are the crazy ones? That's a great question. <laughs> so uh, modern-day Mormons hate, absolutely hate being associated with polygamists. Okay. So it's it, they, are, they are like looked as an offshoot group. Okay. We, we want to, you know, as, as Mormons, we want no part of them. Yeah. Like, okay, no, that's totally different. Although, it be, you know, it but came I mean, from, it, it came from the original Mormonism. Well, didn't they say off. the prophecy is Jesus is coming back or the kingdom's going to come back to Missouri? And that's yes. why they're yeah, like, Jackson County, they, Missouri. Yeah. this is where we're supposed to be. But that they're the fundamentalist LDS. So they're not part of like modern Mormonism. Yeah. So you got to think of it like two separate groups. So they're, they're just a split off sect. Yeah. We but don't this... we don't accept we don't like them and they don't like us. Okay. Although they still use like the Book of Mormon. Okay. Um and Mormons are they're they're very embarrassed oh, you know, growing by their up, existence. Bro, yeah, yeah, by their existence. Like when I was on an airplane, you know, growing up, even when I moved to Austin, uh-huh. I was shocked how many, you know, um I think out west, I think we all kind of knew, you know, 
Mm -hmm. Growing up in California, you knew other Mormons, you know, people yeah. live in Arizona. But my friends back east that I met in Austin, they were like full blown thought I was from a polygamous household. Oh, because they didn't realize. Yeah. That. Like, like one of them, he was dead serious. He was like, you know, he was like, why? I've been friends with him like eight months. He's like, he's like, Curtis, I don't understand why you left Mormonism. Like, that's pretty awesome having <laughs> 10 <laughs> chicks. <laughs> And I, I looked at my, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, are you serious? Are He's you like, serious? yeah. He's like, well, you grew up Mormon, right? I was like, well, yeah, not that kind of Mormon. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was just, and it's still something. Even in Mexico, I have to like clear the air. Explain to me. Always, yeah. always. I mean, it's still very much out there to believe that modern day Mormons are polygamous. So I'm continually having to like shut that down to here. answer that. Yeah, question. yeah. So. Um, but yes, you're right. So modern day Mormons do believe that when the second coming happens of Jesus, that we all gather together in Missouri, in Jackson County, Missouri. And in fact, the, the LDS church owns a lot of land in Missouri. You know what else is interesting? You know who what? the biggest landowner is in the state of Florida? Or the Mormons. No, really? Yeah. We're the biggest landowners in, in Florida. We have a bunch of ranches there. F for what reason? Just, uh, I believe it's for just... Crop. So we have like a bishop storehouse that helps. Oh, so Mormon, helps out poor Mormons, Mormons yeah. believe in storing up food for food hard storage. times. Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, my mom once bought a house in California, in Southern California, that what the a Mormon family had sold it, and in the downstairs, one of the bedrooms had been converted to a. A pantry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I remember. So yeah, that, we, that's we, actually we, like a, a smart idea, right? Like it that's is. Food yeah. We, we grow. Yeah. And, and in fact, in Texas, when you had like Hurricane Harvey and things, you know, I joked with my mom because you know my parents they have that they have that room full of food. Yeah. They do inventory, change out the water every so often. I mean, yeah. no, they're like they're like that. Mormons are prepared for Armageddon. Yeah, like yeah. like they so, got. Hey, the listen, folks. You don't need to do this. You just need to know where a few Mormons live. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So Mormons will share all the food they have. Yeah. That sort of. And hey, so, I want to hear about Joseph Smith. So then, so these things like COVID and, and whatever happened that wiped off the shelves of grocery stores of toilet paper and all that stuff. The Mormons like, yeah, we yeah. don't care. We're already ready. You we're, know what I mean? So I, so I joked. Well I sent pictures to my family. I was like, there's no, you know, there's no bottled water. There's, you know, and then gas stations were running out of gas. Yeah, I don't think Mormons store gas, but I mean, maybe some yeah. do, but, um, uh, and so true. they felt like vindicated. Like, yeah, yeah this is exactly why <laughs> exactly. everyone's been calling us crazy for, for decades. <laughs> for 30 but, years, yeah. but now it's not. But, well, now you see why we're, we're stocked up because yeah, yeah in Texas, oh. it was literally the grocery stores were getting wiped out oh, of, of food. Yeah, from, sort of, like, I had and, a business and, and partner. The, in the big freeze, in the yeah. big freeze in Texas, same thing. People were, were going to the store and buying everything, you know, and they're running it's out. crazy. But, yeah. but, I, I had a paranoid business partner that pre-COVID, we stocked up. I mean, we probably had six months of food. For six of us were living in one house. We easily could have gone six months. Like if we had, wow. if we had rationed it, we could have probably gone eight or nine months. I mean, and I'm talking like a freezer full of meat, a steak, shrimp, chicken, you know, cans of tuna, wow. stuff to make chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. It was insane. And then at some point, we yeah. realized. This is insane. Yeah. Like we're we're insane. Why are yeah. we doing this? This is nuts. No, and you don't and you don't want anyone else to find out because uh, the minute someone finds out about your yeah. stuff, someone's showing up with a gun. And, yeah, uh, you know it's it's a it's a dog eat dog world. Once yeah, once that all goes yeah, down, yeah, we 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 eventually got rid of it little by little. Yeah, bit. it was. It, those were those were really crazy times. So so going back to the history thing, did you ever run across the 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 salamander letter scandal? Did, oh did that, did yeah. That? Yeah, I actually I didn't. That was in the '80s, so I didn't really know about hear about it. Um, what was that guy's name? Mark. Um, anyways, I I don't remember his name, but it's really Mark, interesting. Um, so ah oh, crap. So anyways, yeah, I saw the Netflix documentary a couple years ago, and so a lot of people are like, "Wait, shouldn't the shouldn't these prophets of God like realize that these were fake? You know, why were they buying? Well, right, that was the, that. Yeah, that was my thing that when I heard the story. Yeah. So in, in case anyone listening doesn't know the story. There was a guy that was dealing with antiquities who got very good at forging Joseph Smith's writing, and he made a he made a authentic ink, right? And he got yeah. old. I think he cut old paper out of like yeah. diaries. Yeah, he like, got so it he like had, validated. He yeah. had like authentic paper, authentic ink, and he wrote these letters. And one of them was Joseph Smith meeting a seven foot tall salamander in a top hat and a cane in the forest. <laughs> 
And the Mormon, the Mormon church bought the letters because they were embarrassing. But they, but yeah. go, going back to what you said, they believed they were real. Yeah. Which to me, when I heard it, now of course I wasn't a Mormon, but I was a Christian. Yeah. And when I heard this, and I'm like, oh well, you know, this proves they knew it was fake. Right. So did did things like that make you, when you were questioning, questioning your faith, think to yourself? The leaders must know this is a con, but it's a good con. Or, or do they? That that's what's that is that is what's really tough for me because I you know I years and years watching these guys they seem so genuine, authentic. It's really hard for me. I think it's one of those things where you just you bury yourself into something without you know you put your narrow goggles on. Mm -hmm. I think they really believe it. They just I don't think these leaders believe they're they're leading astray. I mean, I don't know. The other thing is they're their loving life. They have all this power. Right. You know what I mean? All these people believe everything oh, they're going to say. Oh, there's a huge amount of prestige. So I know this from yeah. my church days. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I, everyone, I mean. When you're at the top. You're, 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 when you're, you're like beloved a, by these people. Yeah, yeah, when you're a worship leader or a pastor that's popular, yeah. you write your own ticket. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and it's not about being necessarily a millionaire, but you have, you have, you do have money. Like the top guys have, at least from the church tradition I was or living in, you know, gate guarded communities. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have new cars. They travel when they want. Um, yeah, and, and I give you a good example. So near the church I went to lived a guy named Boyd K. Packer, who was one of the corner of 12 apostles, uh, you know, high up. He was a lifelong seminary teacher, okay. which I think that's, you know, maybe a forty five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year job. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't pay real great. But the house he lived in, right? I mean, he's worth $2 million. Wow, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, how, he he was, he was, well, he, he, and he had eight kids. So he was living great. Yeah. I, like I like a seminary teacher with like eight kids right. doesn't have a $2 million no, house. No, no, no. I think in those situations, there's people getting special loans and they're getting help. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I, yeah he was definitely getting, you know, some help. And so maybe the church just buys these guys and I said, and, and I will say, I will, I will, Genuinely says I don't think they're getting a large, like extraordinary amounts of money. Yeah, I don't think so. I do know that their kids get college paid for, so there's some perks. Um, Mormon. Let me go beat the yeah, dog yeah. and then we'll, yeah. we'll continue. So okay. I I will say one thing that um, is good about Mormonism. So my brothers have been bishops. It's non paid. Mm. It is a lot of work. They you know they they overlook congregations of about four hundred people. Wow, you know, you deal with all the drama, the problems. So, so, uh, um, so, so, my understanding is a ward is is based on geography. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, it's unlike in a, map, yeah. unlike in evangelicalism, um, you kind of pick in, like you have a menu of churches. Oh, I'm gonna go to this oh, church, yeah, no, yeah. and then I'm gonna. If you don't quite like the music or you don't like the pastor, you try another church. Yeah. But in it's a sign boundary. Yeah. Too. In 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 so in in the LDS wards, it's if you live in this area, you go to this, and that's your community. Yeah. And that probably gives it some stability and. Oh, it's awesome and, because then you know what what I loved growing up was the the friends I because school's the same way it's by boundary right okay right so then all the neighbors I would. Guys, I went to school with. I also saw a church on Sunday. Ah, okay. So it's awesome. So it's very consistent. You see all your friends on Sunday. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's it, it's it's an awesome like society. So then, yeah, it it, it was great. But um, and like I said, so all the positions, you know, it's all voluntary. Uh huh. Right. So maybe up until the very top, like the prophet, the twelve apostles, they do get money. Okay. Then you know, I think they're like one hundred twenty thousand a year. You know, but no, but, okay, but does a does a does a ward have a pastor that preaches every Sunday? They get no. Like what's position? cool is that like the whole like everyone takes turns giving talks, sermons. Oh. So even as a even as a fourteen year old boy, I had to get up. I mean, that's great for like public speaking and, oh, and everything. Interesting, interesting. So so as a young kid, you go up and 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 speak in front of three hundred people. That. That is overcoming fear, sure, sure. Like getting out of your comfort zone. I mean, that. that okay, that I, I never realized. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. So, so everyone, there's not like an official pastor of that of that. There is, and that's the bishop who oh who oversees, oversees. it, and ah. and he'll probably give more talks than okay than anyone. But shows, then he, he, he would events. handle things like in a, a regular church, say a couple's having some marital problems, yes, or, uh -huh. or someone's having counsel. financial problems. He would help organize those. Yeah. Those so issues. so Mormons believe that he is. And your neighborhood or ward is the most connected to God and can okay. give 
he can counsel kind of speak, and advice. He can kind of speak with God's spirit in the yeah, sense of exactly. authority. Exactly. Right. And yeah. then I, I'm assuming there's, is there, there's maybe some paid staff for maintenance and then that's it. Everyone else is volunteer or it's like well, the singers volunteer, the janitors volunteer, everyone's a volunteer. Yeah. I mean, for a while they had a janitor, but then they had like the old members. You had to go clean the oh, church Sunday okay. morning. So you took turns. Like I said, I haven't, I haven't gone for years. Maybe that's changed a little bit, but, um, I'm pretty certain it's still the members so, itself that so go and what, clean the church. Where does all the tithing money go? To buy land in Florida? To, to buy more crops, churches? To yeah. buy more properties? Yeah. And so that that that's something else that has caused a lot of rift mm -hmm. and anger in members. So it was uncovered that there's a $30 billion investment fund. Wow, $30 billion. Yeah, that they invest some money. So like Mormons pay their 10% thinking, oh, it's going to feed the... Be the hungry, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's like building churches. Christ, yeah, it's yeah. Working. yeah, but then, you know, for a lot of Mormons, I maybe understand the investment fund, but, you know, the, the, the church was like, oh, this is for, you know, future, you never know, like, sure. you know, God's plan. But then you're supposed to store, don't question it. You you're know? supposed to store up your treasure in heaven, not on earth. So, well, yeah. so then, yeah, I mean, who knows, but obviously that was another point. So things have come out like little by little. I'd say, and this is, you know, moving forward with, with religion and, and, you know, the Mormon church in general, it'd be interesting to see how it survives. You yeah. know, I have a lot of friends that go along with the Mormon church because it's for social reasons. Sure. You know, in, in that, in that this documentary, like a... Religious with Bill Maher, uh -huh. he was interviewing and the people nailed it on the head. You leave the Mormon church, you're like committing social suicide in Utah. Right. Right. right? So you have a lot of people still go along with it, don't really believe in it for the same it's... reasons I don't, and but um, it, but for a, that sense of community, right, right, it's and like not a to be club. judged for leaving. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a club. You don't yeah. want to leave, and so you know. Well, what percentage do you think is would fit? That's that? a good question. I haven't lived in Utah for eight years, but you know, I'm in constant contact, and mm -hmm. and I and it's becoming more that line. It's almost becoming like the. the catholic church in mexico like uh, yeah okay. like everyone here in mexico claims they're catholic but like no one's gonna like go do a two-year mission for the catholic no, church of course and they're not even gonna they're, two, going... they're not even gonna do a two-week um so so you bring up an interesting you bring up an interesting thing about mexico so guadalajara is very progressive and it's pretty liberal um but it still has a strong uh there's still a strong influence on the catholic church here but I think most people, even those that go to church, aren't specifically. This is my this is my take. Yeah. I might be wrong. Are are not necessarily fully believing and fully right, fully accepting all the teachings of the church. But it's part of their life, and they grow up. Yeah. And the younger ones start realizing, and maybe to please their parents, they go to church sometimes. But they don't. They like they don't really believe Jesus rose from the dead, or they don't really believe in miracles. They've just they accept the church as kind of part of the culture. Is that, has that been in your experience here too? Or do you find there's. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's the same as any religion. I think there's a lot of pressure I've seen from Mexicans to get married in the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of Catholics. That oh, my own. Have, they haven't been to church in my five own years. Daughter. My own daughter had yeah. to have two weddings Yeah, because her, her, her fiance's family said, if you don't marry in the church, we won't go. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she's like, okay, I surrender. I, she had two dresses, yeah. two dinners, two rehearsals, two weddings. And oh, it's a big thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay, I'll do it. The, in the church, yeah. And that's the funny thing is the parents don't care. You cannot go to church for 10 years, but you absolutely have to get married. In the Catholic right, because church. It's, it's so a, funny. It's well, a, because it's like it's a tradition. Sacrament. It's culture. Yeah. Well, but I think they also believe, and it goes back to the baptism of the dead or baptism of or or how your family wants to make sure you're taken care of. I think yeah, I think the Catholic the has that tradition that if you get certain sacraments, even if you just yeah. go out and do your own thing, you're still you're you're not going to go to the outer darkness or hell. You have some there's some saving grace there for being part of something like they oh you got baptized Agreed, yeah yeah so you you you, you put you, a check mark you put it yeah right exactly and I think that gives them some sense of of assurance and maybe some uh, an easing of the anxiety true which which would then lead me to the the obvious question here do you think that your like family feels hey curtis is going to be okay you know maybe he's off the ranch a little bit but in the end it's going to work out and they're still praying yeah. for you and they still yeah i mean 
so I mean, I have I I I have a couple siblings that I talk openly with, and mm -hmm. um, they get it. They're cool yeah. with it. I mean, they're kind of just they live in Utah, and I think yeah, part of me thinks that uh, if they didn't, then. You know, maybe they'd be a little bit more on on my well, side. Well, if, if they move, if they moved away, they have a little bit more freedom to question. Well, things yeah, or... it just like I said, it's back to just your neighbors are all going, your family's all going, so you go right. Yeah. Everyone just kind of falls along without questioning. So, um, and so yeah, I don't know. I think my parents really have a hard time. I they, think yeah, I, they struggle with. The... I think they pray probably for me, like frequently that yeah. you know come back and it is hard i think that was a i think it took me years to really just get to where i was because i you know it's like yeah i don't want to like disappoint my sure, parents nobody sure. wants to just like yeah this is a built like, in sad and sad in their parents right yeah, so yeah, yeah it was very tough and i've never really talked with them openly about it because i don't think i don't think there was a middle ground it's like no you know and it would be hard for them to understand it, yeah. yeah no it, it would so i mean yeah, you know, I, I think it'd be good eventually to talk to him. Just be like, look, like, I appreciate every way, the way you raised me, this mm -hmm. and that. I understand why you fully believe I, I really do. Yeah. I mean, you grew up in a time that that's just what it is. Right. And honestly, it makes him happy. I, I, I don't want my parents to leave because then no, for me, you, you kind of have, you know, you have to restart your life over again. And I think leaving religion, you have to find your new purpose. I think that's what's really hard as well. You know, yeah. and it took me kind of a few years to figure out okay this was my life purpose for so long okay now what is it like what so what age is this this is early 20s yeah early 20s yeah okay so you're in your early 20s and you've and you've kind of figured out hey this this whole message this this belief system isn't isn't founded on like absolute truth and i and and i'm doubting it and what you just said about purpose like i understand for me it was the same kind of thing what went on your head what did you think about like, I think a lot of people have this idea that if you leave Christianity or this, oh, it's because you wanted to go yeah, to exactly, yeah. strip clubs yep, and yep. do, you know, have hookers and blow and yep. go to Vegas and, and do anything you want. Oh, you could kill people now because yeah, yeah. You, it's like, are you, are you crazy? Uh, right. So obviously you're like, you're a very good person. You didn't change who you are. You're right. still the same good person. Um, but now you have a little bit more leeway because maybe watching a rated R movie isn't right. going to feel guilty, right? right? It's like you can have a beer and not yeah. feel guilty. You can um, you can experiment with things that before would be unheard of. Now it's just like, well, maybe that's not so bad, or yeah. maybe it's not. And but the but the life purpose question is still, why am I freaking here on this planet, and what what am I doing with yeah. myself? How did you resolve that, and what you know did you? Did you just decide life was hedonism and fun yeah. or? Yeah. And, and, and it's a long like transition too, because at first you still feel that guilt, even though, even though you've come to the conclusion, like, Hey, I don't believe in this. Even, you know, even my first beer or whatever, I'd still felt that. <laughs> you felt a little guilty. Like, guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. because, <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like ages zero to 23 year old Curtis would despise, you know, this 24 year old uh, Curtis. Right. Then so you kind of have to reconcile that a little bit, um, and so yeah. Did, did you start and, and in small a, and, amounts like drinking a yeah, cup yeah. of coke or yeah, yeah. maybe like a little you bit? Can, of... You can drink. You can. Yeah, I think that's another misnomer. Like oh, Mormons yeah. can drink coke. Okay, coke. so caffeine's no longer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ca okay. Yeah, and I don't know how that I, ever no, leaked no, out. No, no, no. I've nothing. heard it. I've heard it. Yeah, I've heard yeah, it. Okay. Heard it for a number of places, but you can't have coffee. That is true. Well, what's the difference between a coke and a coffee? The amount of caffeine. <laughs> so it's still true it's just the degree well okay. yeah i mean right. not to bore people but yeah. there there's a you know some scripture by joseph smith that said no hot drinks and so that oh. got interpreted as like coffee you know but he probably but hot chocolate's okay he meant something like without with spirits right? uh, yeah i don't know but anyways so but okay back to your progression you you so yeah i internalized it a lot. It was really hard because I didn't feel like I had anybody I could openly like talk about these doubts. If I did, they'd be like, "Oh, Curtis, stop it! Like, go get your scriptures and pray." This is still and, a new job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Satan talking to you. So I didn't feel like I could really openly talk about my doubts. So I internalized it for a long time. I, you know, I I was so busy. I was working school. I think I'd get home like a lot. You know, when you're just laying at bed at night, that's kind of when you think about yeah. you know your purpose and life and what you're doing, right? So that's when I would. You know, read kind of about, you know, Mormon history and, and kind of 
figure that all out and then develop what was going to replace all that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's not just true of Mormons and that's true of anybody that leaves their religion or whatever their life's purpose. And, yeah. um, what was really good is, uh, Sundays, I just replaced it with outdoors. I'd go hiking, okay. just kind of get my, you know, feel that time. I just laid around and played video games because it was, you know, Sunday mornings, you, you were learning, you were with other people, it was social. Mm -hmm. So there was a, you know, a net tangible benefit there, yeah. right? Because... Is there a little great. leeway to miss church once in a while when you're having doubts? But yes. Not tell people you're having doubts. Yeah. So I like... think it's just what's interesting. <laughs> I'm going camping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think a lot of people, COVID because it was home church. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of Mormons haven't fully gone back to like every Sunday oh, church. Right. Because they got used to. Because they got used to doing just home church, you know. Ah, okay. So then they're like, look, this is pretty nice, right? Yeah, yeah. They kind of broke that routine. So even some older generation uh, Mormons, you know, aren't so like every Sunday mm -hmm. because Mormon, you know, my parents are every Sunday when they come to Guadalajara, you know, we went to church and, you know, wherever they go, it, it, yeah. you know, it, it's, it, it's, um, let's go to church. So, um, but back to your point about that. So, yeah, it was, I, as far as the process of like, and every Sunday Mormon as I was in my early twenties, mm -hmm. Graduates, I'd say from ages 23, 4, 24 to like 28. By like 28, I was like, okay, I'm like, why? I'm not doing right. this anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't. And you I haven't gotten to Austin yet. No, no, no. Austin okay. was when I was yeah. 31. So okay. So when years. this happens, you quit going to church every, at all. You just drop out and. Yeah. And your parents are like, what's wrong with you? Or you kind of... Oh, I didn't really ever talk to them kept, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was like clued in to what was going on. Okay. And then my parents had, were on a Mormon mission in India. So they were far away. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they were here in India and then Sri Lanka for six months. So um, so they were they were away. In fact, and then kind of it crossed over. I moved to Austin around the time they were going to come home, if I, if I remember right. Um. So yeah, I just quietly just went about it. I didn't want to make some big exit. This is another thing, and this is this is also interesting. I didn't want to be one of those people that made like ex Mormon as my new identity, yeah. because I I found those guys to be kind of over the top. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, you your new persona is not something. <laughs> yeah, you're describing yeah. my whole you're describing my whole YouTube channel, and I asked I've asked people this: Why do we do this? Why do we yeah. listen to this? Why, why do I do, why am I, but why do I study the Bible now more than I ever did as a okay, Christian? Yeah. And so you're describing me. And the answer is for one, it's therapeutic for me okay. because I was really damaged. Yeah. I mean, really like I didn't have good parents like you. I mean, I'm not saying my parents okay. were bad, but yeah. you know, my parents got divorced when I was like five and my life was very difficult, okay. but not ideal. This ideal, that would be like paradise to me. So I think the damage that I went through and the hardships I went through took me to a place where I feel my my YouTube channel and my talking to people might help others that haven't completely come out of the religious no, doctrine. No, that's a great and, point. And so I feel like I'm something doing... like this would have been would have been key and crucial years yeah. twenty four to twenty eight. Yeah, and I was probably and I honestly probably was watching stuff like this. And I think it's kind of like you go through. Maybe correct. I'll step back. It's not like how do people make their identity that I think for me, it's like same stages of like maybe going through a breakup. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, first you're like kind of stunned and then you're angry. You know, the, at some point sure. in the time you're angry, you're pissed <laughs> oh, off. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Like, okay. I just yeah. wasted 23 years of my life. I could have been partying in high yeah. school You know, I couldn't wow. be doing all this. And I was doing that instead. And then you, I guess I kind of got over the anger stage. Um, and then, you know, I'm settled at the, the point I'm at now, but, um, yeah, no, but I think, I think what you're doing is, is, is bringing a light to, you know, like I said, a lot of those people that, that are stuck. And yeah. You know, well, people that are questioning and are yeah. saying, am I alone in this? Right. No, you're like, this is normal. But, but I, don't, I wouldn't say you've made your personality of Everyone that knows you wouldn't say like, oh, I know Mike is like an ex. <laughs> yeah, that's my online, my YouTube yeah, personality. Uh, okay, yeah, it's like yeah, an ex. No, my, my, I think my personality in Guadalajara by those in the, in the friendship circle and the acquaintance know me as this crazy, 
the older party guy who just right. had fun. And then now I'm practically like a married old guy again because I've been, you know, yeah. three years in a relationship. So it's almost, you know, minus the church, my life is pretty much like if I was married and yeah, the church every Sunday. No, it's it, no, it's <laughs> and, 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 and you you find that balance, you regain that balance, and then yeah. you know, I I went through the same thing. I was like, look, now I'm free, you know, can party hard, you know, I was drinking whatever, and never got like into into drugs really. But I mean, you you start you start just lashing out and it's that rebellion, you know, it's yeah. like that it's an inner rebellion of like, of like, like screw all that. Yeah. Like this was BS. And then honestly, you come back to that a little bit because a life unhinged with, like I mentioned at the beginning of no discipline, you know, isn't sure. really a roadmap to happiness. I, I no. Would say. Yeah, yeah. So, so for me, when I was in that stage of, parties and sex and drugs and the whole thing it was like i felt good and was happy about it i it's not sustainable but True, but, yeah. but what i also what it, what it was also revealing to me was the church lie like it's not like if you if you do a psychedelic and you have some visions and you are you have a nice night dancing the techno music because you're on a on a psychedelic that 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 means you're you're giving over to satan and and you're hurting people and yeah. yourself right you, there's a responsible way to like like let's be let's face it alcohol is a poisonous thing it's freaking terrible for you yeah but a few beers a few drinks even if you you know you get maybe, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah you have fun sometimes and it, it, like if we're gonna go down that road we might as well ban everything that's bad for you like true eating oreo cookies or something no, right? it's a, so it, it's it, a balance yeah and my mormons have mormons vice is instead of having alcohol is is sugar you it's know, cookies you, 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 i mean Brownies. i mean utah I would say there's no like great food that I miss, but man, they have some amazing dessert shops there. I mean, oh, the, you I know, they cook. It. I mean, that, that nationwide crumble actually started in in Utah. It's pretty popular nationwide. So you have amazing dessert spots, and and they're fantastic. So yeah, I mean, to that point, everyone has a vice, whether yeah. you're religious or not. Um, you know, and so like I said, we all religious, non-religious, we all do things that aren't good for us. We just justify it in different ways yeah. you know what's the underground um in in utah like the underground party scene where there's the the non-mormons but they bring yeah. in a certain amount of mormons that are just like yeah i know this is not true and i'm 15 years old and but my parents can't yeah. know so i'm a good kid most of the week but on saturday yeah. night i'm crazy yeah yeah you no, were that's never a, that's part, good question were you never part of that or you no i wasn't <laughs> um you know it's funny because i think what exactly what we're talking about when you have like a very highly religious area or community, you're also going to have extreme on the other side. Like they people leave. They totally, yeah. yeah. So it was, I remember on my backpacking trip, I ran into a group from Wisconsin and you know, you know, Wisconsin, they're, they're notorious for heavy drinkers up there. Mm. You know, it's, it's winter time that, you know, they, I think, Per capita, I think you know it's some statistic that they 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 drink more, and you know University of Wisconsin's always up there as highest party schools. But it's always stuck with me because a few of them live there. They're they're like, oh, you're from Utah. They're like, they're like we drink and we party in Wisconsin, but they're like, you guys in Utah just go nuts <laughs> with the drug. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. It's just like this like opposition that comes into place like people that leave mormon church feel like they just need to go they real to go crazy hard yeah. the other way just in this act of rebellion he's like i couldn't keep up with you like <laughs> people in the utah <laughs> party scene because you guys you're so we're, crazy. We're, we're, we're going hard so yeah i mean you have that element i mean and it's you know people look at utah like oh there's nothing to do i mean the nightlife has grown a lot and maybe a lot of that partying is kind of underground like you mentioned yeah. the house parties and stuff i, I would say you know, in my late twenties, early thirties, up to thirty-one, when I was in Utah. I'd say it was a little bit more, maybe going house parties than say like Austin. Mm -hmm. Austin was like strictly, you know, you go out to the bars. It's not really a house party scene. Whereas Utah, you do have bars, but it's not like a cool right. downtown where it's like, all right, you know, it's it gets the job done. You can go out in Utah, downtown Salt Lake, and you know, have a good time. But it's not like in Austin or Nashville yeah. or something. no, I know when I was San Diego, when the I was there, we, gas we, lamp district, you we, know what I mean? We we were there for a month because my mom was in hospice and she was, you know, she would yeah. decide, okay, I'm, my life's gonna be ending soon. 
it was around Thanksgiving. So we, we had like this giant family reunion. So we had like three or four weeks sitting in, sitting in Utah and like, East Jordan or something. No, or South like, Jordan. South yeah. Jordan. There's like a light snow. Well, there's a West Jordan. South and we're Jordan, and yes. we're like, we're like, oh man, we need to get to the we need to get to the liquor store because they they like yeah. lock that stuff down. Yeah. And it is like, wait, what is this beer? It's like two percent. What in the world? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, it was just it was like another well, weird, weird world to it, me. Yeah, it's interesting. So um, Anheuser Busch and all them would make beer specifically for Utah, the lower percentage. But then eventually, this was one or two years ago, they said, screw it. You know, you're going to have to just conform. We're not, we're done we're making not, special beer. We're not going to do it. So yeah, now the percentages are, are the or same. Or just regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's the same as you find other states. But yeah, I mean, it's stricter. You have state liquor stores that close a little bit early. But I don't know. I mean, you go to you go to like certain counties in Texas, they don't sell any. Yeah, there's, there's dry, dry county. counties. Yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy. But so, so, but, so people want to bash Utah, but it's like I've been yeah. places where like it's stricter oh, and, out of state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the Bible Belt for so, sure. So yeah, a state liquor store in Utah still closes at I think 10 o'clock. I mean, that's, no, I was that, in Louisiana. Too crazy. I was in the Louisiana in the 90s where you could go and get a drive in. Oh, yeah, daiquiri, the gas station. Yeah. A drive in daiquiri and drink. Like, well, in Texas, you used to be able to drink and drive. Well, Louisiana is an absolute yeah. circus. I, I, yeah, no, I made a few road trips down to Baton Rouge, New Orleans, while I lived in Texas. And Dude, I was on a one-lane highway, and a guy's coming straight at me, you know, probably 100 miles an hour. You know, I swerved over the off the shoulder. Oh, I, I, that, it was midnight. I, I should have, could have just died. Oh, right yeah. yeah. I mean, it's no, just it's crazy. It's it's circuit. Yeah, it's. I think you can have open container in Louisiana. Le, Louisiana is a different world. Yeah. Well, now, granted, I was, I was there in, ni- like, 91, yeah. so I don't know how it I don't, is. But I, as, of, as of... Uh, Five years ago hasn't changed. Wow, oh, jeez. So when you so when you're going through this transition of okay, now I can have a beer. Now I can uh, like I'm not. Now you get you have to make your own rules. At this point in your life, did you decide that there's there's just like no God, nothing, no rules, or did you think, well, well there's still something that I have to follow and be uh, good yeah. good about? Question. Like I have to still be a good person, but I don't have to be so strict. Yeah. So that, so that's a great question. So a lot of Mormons that leave, a lot of them are still Christians. Um, I would say a fair amount end up kind of agnostic like me, I guess friends of mine that have, that have left. Um, because then I think unlike, you know, say the, the Mexican Catholics, you know, when, when you know, when you're in a very strict religion, you investigate, you know, you, you, you already have a great knowledge base of the religion. And then you look at the Bible and it goes back to, I guess, Mormonism, this supreme being. I mean, this guy had this fantastic plan for all of his children. It's really not a great plan. He left us with the Bible that's been ripped to shreds. Yeah. You know, it's translated so many times. It's inconsistent. This, this was a thing for me leaving and us. so How do I'm, you like, know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> mm, I can't really throw all my eggs in that basket either. Right. I've read the Bible, you know, nine, nine, ten times. Um, not enough there. The whole story of Jesus sounds great. It's it's awesome. And in fact, you know, Christianity is a good moral code. And, you know, I think it was me and my wife have kids. I, you know, she's still very much with it. She doesn't really go to church, but she doesn't really affect She was raised cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm, like, I'm, yeah. I'm okay if she wants to give her kids the moral code of, of yeah. christianity and 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 um admiring and worshiping this perfect guy that was nice to everybody and you know loving yeah. and caring and, and loves well i think a kids. lot of parents yeah, want their great. kids to go yeah, to like a private so, so sort like, of that so sort i'm of like you know that's fine but for me i'm like like no one has like a, a clear answer you think about it both sides you know it's like evolution sounds i mean really look at evolution that sounds crazy but then on the other side, creationism, like who created God? How did this all start? This superpower that was just spawned out of nowhere. And it's like, you know, creationists are like, oh, it's beyond your comprehension. You were never in, your brain yeah. was <laughs> never meant to understand that. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, both sides. But then they try to tell you how it yeah, is. Yeah, I, like I mean, evolution sounds a little bit more believable, but still, it's still like hard to believe that we came from a single cell you know, molecule and, 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 and turned into this and the, you know, just earth with its perfect condition, you know, with how huge this universe is could have it. So I don't really bother getting myself all worked up on either side of that. I'm like, look, I'm going to live a pretty good life. You know, I can sit on the judgment seat of God and be like, look, 
this plan you created was really hard yeah, to yeah. believe, especially right. the Mormon version where you yeah. just basically took took the truthfulness from the earth for, you know, 2,000 years and put it back, or eight, 1,800 years and put it yeah. back on the earth with this treasure hunter. Just Wait, what about all the yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and you know what's interesting, to go off tangent, just speaking of Guadalajara, have you seen that documentary about the uh, La Luz del Mundo, speaking of religion? Back. La Luz del Mundo is a church founded in 1926. Anywhere you name it, there's a church of the light of the world. I, I have not yeah. seen it, but I want yeah. to. Yeah, so I'm, there's a lot of parallels there with Mormonism. Even my wife was like, this is kind of like how Mormon started. I was like, yeah. So the guy that started that Crazy. came out, I have a new story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm restoring God's church. I have a vision. So, yeah, so, right. so they claim to have 5 million members. His story is that he restored uh, the original God's church, but he calls, instead of the Mormons have the prophet, he calls himself the apostle. And same type of thing. There was like a religious unrest in Mexico in the 1927. So he kind of found his time. Same thing in upstate New York in the 1830s. Um, an upheaval about religion, confusion, you know, whatever coming about. So a lot of parallels. If you watch that, I, that like kind of was like, okay, this even makes even more sense of what, you yeah. know, then he got his under, underage girls and whatever, you know, all the, yeah. well, the tragedy of a cult, yeah, David Koresh. Yeah. All the, all the yeah. tragedy that happens after that. But anyways, um, yeah. Speaking of religion. So anyways, back to what I was saying. Yeah. I don't. I don't know, you know. No. I so I just well, blame you myself yourself, you agnostic. Yourself, you called yourself an agnostic. Agnostic because could we live in a construct, a computer construct? Do you think? Yeah. To fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I I don't know if I ever get to the point where I can say, "Oh, well, this is this is it. This is the truth." Yeah. You know this this all. Well, if makes you sense. if you die and you're just dead, you won't know. But if yeah. you die and you are conscious of something, you'll be like, you think you'll be really surprised or Will it be uh, like, okay, I I'd be like, this is awesome. You know, it's like setting the bar low, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and if I, and if I, my spirit continues on and, you know, and it's not over at Maybe death. It's, a, it's like a big video game. I'd be yeah. like, be like a, yeah, an extra life bonus of like, yeah. this is sweet. You know, I, I got an extra life and I got. I want to go I, back I, and be an NBA star. And, yeah. And I had a good enough justification for how I lived, whoever yeah. the supreme being is. And, you know, I tried right. to live a good life still and, and, um, do these things, but I, I'm, I'm you know, assuming it you sucks. Your life I, I'm counting on. I'm effort. counting on there being nothing, right? That way, that's what I think too. There's probably nothing. I'm counting on there being nothing. Just you know. And this life is what it is, and you it is. Yeah, it. make the most of it, and, and which, which and isn't too sad either. But. I mean, and I'm assuming your plan is to have kids, and you want to. Yeah. You want to pass on what you've learned about life, and assuming, like I think most parents would say, I want my kids to have a better foundation than I have. Not that your foundation yeah. was bad or your parents yeah. were bad. You've you've said your parents were loving and kind and great. But there's always something we can improve on for sure from yeah. our own. Uh, so yeah, I would like yeah. I think I think that the benefit my kids will have. I mean, well, not two religions in the household, whatever. But I think the biggest thing will be like, hey, look, you get to take information mm -hmm. with an open mind. You know, I feel like as a kid, instead of getting fed a yeah, dogma, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Instead of yeah. getting fed a dogma and, and and the religion spit on thing to kind of restrict things. So I think that excites me, you know, yeah. I think that excites me for my kids as being like, you know, I still want structure for them, you know, yeah. it's not like, all right, you just go do whatever, you yeah. know, but, um, um, I, th I think it's exciting for them that they, you know, and I also want to pass down my heritage and maybe have appreciation for what sacrifices went into play and pass, you know, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't expect them to believe obviously in, in either catholicism or mormonism right. but just appreciation for what it was and, and kind of the things sure. that it, you know that well the history about it is interesting but yeah whether it's catholicism protestantism yeah uh, mormonism like i i read a little bit about um like you know more as a christian reading into the bad stuff but it's still like a fascinating like the 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 what is it the green valley massacre the whole the so the Mormons who were oh the the Mount uh, the Mount, Mount Meadows Reeds, Mount, yeah, the Mount Meadows, Meadows yeah, massacre yeah, yeah. because they were like trying to they were trying to like keep their yeah, yeah. purity and Utah they thought they were intruders and yeah. like had to come off yeah I mean there's it's, just a lot of stuff like that that was just like was like was God really communicating and so that was always the question when I left Mormonism mm -hmm. like throughout all these situations I'm like 
was God really a mouthpiece in this prophet's ear? Yeah. Well, no, because we would have avoided this. We would have avoided we, that. Yeah. And why I, do we need to do um? Why do we need to do test runs and pilot runs on certain programs if the church, if Jesus can't just tell the prophet, look, this is the way it is because I'm all knowing, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it, it's amazing how much you have to like make things work within a religion and just like yeah. cast that out and be like, oh, okay, that doesn't make sense, but whatever. Like this religion makes me happy. And if I'm going to get, you know, my Did eternal you, reward, then, then I need to keep going. Right. Do you think that's the, the evolution of Mormonism as well as Christianity in general, that it, it's going to morph into, Hey, we used to be mean to black people. We used to be mean to gay people. We used to, yeah. we used to be, we used to diminish the rights of women and that that was all wrong and bad and we know better now and 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 most people coming to church give lip service to the idea that jesus actually rose from the dead or that miracles happen but they're in a club that they like and they help each other move yeah. and there's potlucks do you do, I, I sort of see that happening do yeah you think, I, you I, I see it yeah exactly i was i was telling some friends that were Oops, sorry. In the church, I, I I see it eventually just becoming like Mexico Catholicism, mm -hmm. right? Where you just for tradition you keep doing certain things, um, you know, which is great, which is cool, um, and you know, and I I, I foresee that as the future of Mormonism. They the, you know the old school way of being so harsh and uh -huh. just boom, you got to do it this way. I don't know how long that can last with the information age. And, and back to it, that's when people started making their exit with the information age with the internet. So you're, you're right. looking at, you're looking at, honestly, only, you know, it's a, in the grand scope of things, you're only looking at maybe, you know, 24 years. You know, yeah. I mean, high, it, high speed it, internet was late 90s, right? Yeah. Yeah. Late 90s is dial up Yahoo. And it's I mean, still, you, YouTube, there's not that much stuff yeah, on. You, YouTube was what, 2006? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. So yeah. Like, people are not getting information. So we're only, start. we're only 20 years yeah. of like, of the, of the lid getting ripped off. Yeah. And people finding out. So, I mean, you're gonna have the ripple effect from that. And, and so, yeah, I'm very curious. I have, I have 20 nieces and nephews. I mean, it'd be very, you know, very interesting to see. What happens with them. how they perceive yeah. their? Yeah. I mean, their... because they they got more of an open book yeah. to the world than I got, yeah. right? And that's going to continue with each with each generation, and and so, um, and they can't help but see, you know, watch South Park, for instance, right? Like, how do you how do you stop that generation from being yeah. exposed to media? Right. I and, mean, you had the Book of Mormon musical that was out. I mean, Trey Parker, Matt Stone were very, you know, well researched and. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of what they do. So nowadays, you don't really need to seek out type an anti Mormon. You could you could probably watch just a neutral video about Mormonism and be like, okay, like, all right, this you know doesn't quite jive or make sense. And so, um, yeah, it it it'll be interesting. And and I've I've seen a lot of friends leave and come to me like you know I was left way before them, and I didn't make a ground announcement either. Yeah. Well, they sort of figured it out and they come to you for yeah, advice. Exactly. Or to or the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. For yeah. advice. They're like, well, how do you how do you manage family relationships? You know, like I, I have a friend in Texas who's like, you know, this summer my son's at the age to be baptized. Eight years old is when uh, Mormons baptize their kids. And he's like, I'm not worthy or whatever to baptize my kid. I'm going to have to ask my dad or my father-in-law yeah. to baptize my son. He's like, and, he, and he's like, I'm stressed out. I have so much anxiety about having that conversation you know, what should I do? Like having to explain. Yeah, it. exactly. Right. So, um, yeah, it's happening more and more. And I think to your, you know, to your benefit with this YouTube channel, I, I think there's, you know, more and more people shifting that way. And, um, you know, the challenge then becomes of what do you replace it with, you know? Yeah. And, and so, um, well, that's a good and, question and, and, about and you. And there's, there, and there's more help and there's more resource. Yeah. I see Instagram pages of like life after Mormonism and, right. you know, I'm therapist. Honestly, I, I probably, I wish I would have gone to see a therapist when I was when like 26, 27. Okay. Oh, I absolutely should have. Yeah. I wasn't good for me to internalize all that. I, you know, it would have been really good for me to talk about it back then. And, um, I think back then I probably, you know, would have came in maybe more of an X mentality, maybe mm -hmm. more upset, angry 
kind of we're talking about. I think it's just been so long. You know, it's been you know eleven years to where I've yeah. just come to terms with it. I don't really. You know, going back to your purpose, though, do you find that when you replace when you replace your quote purpose that you felt maybe relieved or happier or less frustrated? So for me, what the the purpose of this question is for me is when I was in Christianity, I felt. God must have a plan for me to do, and I and I was continually frustrated because I wasn't sure. Like, should I be a pastor? Should I go to Bible school? Yeah. Should I be this? Where should I live? Like, I wanted God to answer these questions for me. And coming out of that, I realized, no, you're in this life. You know, it's you. You're in this life. It's yeah. your life. So it, that's both scary and and rewarding because now you get to choose. So when you were going through that, did you struggle with this? And did you find a, you know, so in other words, it's easy to end up just self-medicating with whether it's drugs or alcohol or video games and making money and having, uh, you know, dating a lot of girls, but never committing Yeah, and, and letting that fill up your life so that, yeah, you know, you're not necessarily, it's not like you're depressed, but you're not really. Yeah. You're, Sorry, this is no. Scary. You're you're fine. Yeah, I think I think you mask the truth. Then you kind of mask that pain. It is a painful process, you know. Like you said, with girls, video games, um, alcohol, and I've and I view other people who leave Mormonism. They kind of do the same thing. They're kind of in denial about the pain, but it is a painful process. It is because you're literally trying to replace. You know, for a lot of Mormons, your 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 social life is the church. You know, your your personal belief system, obviously the church. Like you know, everything is the church. A lot of instances, the entertainment, even for my parents. You know, going to you know LDS themed um, musicians destinations, whatever. You know, it's it's yeah. uh, you know. So you're you're honestly replacing a lot. Yeah. And so you got You got to navigate that and figure it out. And and that's. And that's the tough part. For me, I felt like it was, you know, it, it was a bit of that. It was a journey, right? It was. It didn't. It wasn't like finding a purpose instantly. Yeah. You know, and and I think everybody has a different amount of time they need. You know, and and your viewers, they're they're you know, each of them's different. They're gonna have a different amount of time needed to get through mm-hmm. that, right? But I think the biggest advice would be is to find other people doing the same mm-hmm. that are navigating the same thing. And honestly, maybe even go see a therapist. That yeah, can, no, I think that's they, a very they, good. They, 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 they can talk you through that because I internalized it all, which I think made the process longer. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I well, would, just talking to anybody is helpful. Yeah. 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 And so honestly, it was amazing. So I think naturally just because of my background, social circle, I attracted very Mormon girls and I had to kind of just internalize it mm-hmm. and I couldn't talk to them. It wasn't until kind of my last year in Utah, I started dating a girl. She was actually a convert. She converted to the Mormon church um, through a Mitt Romney's presidential campaign in 2012. Oh, wow. She met some guys campaigning for Romney in Virginia, converted, moved out to Utah um, early in her Mormon years, started reading a little bit more about the truth. I know, screw this. And then we met actually on like Tinder or something. We started dating. There was so much about her that were probably red flags I didn't like about her, but we connected so well. Mm. So I think that was finally a therapy. And we would just, we would just talk about it, like, yes, like, yes, like, Oh my goodness. It was just such a relief. And, you know, sorry for her. She was probably ended up being that therapist in that situation <laughs> she, she because was, I could yeah. finally talk. I had right. so much to just, to just blurt out. Yeah. And she had read through so many things. I did. I was like, yes. I mean, it just makes sense. Right. And it was, you know, and I clung on to her for that, you know, for that reason, that was like a big, that was such a huge help for me at that time to, you know, to go through that. And then, um, like I said, just finding really latching on hard to your hobbies, you know, I play soccer and then making yeah. that, um, well, filling, ma- ma- filling making, your making time with your purpose. Yeah, yeah. Ma- filling your time with purposeful things. Well, I, and, and an interesting thing about going with the future, and I don't know if you agree, I find as well is that, you know, I see society, it's obvious, it's getting less religious Yeah, in the U.S., very clear, obvious. Do you find that people are, are replacing religion with politics? I feel like people are 
getting more obsessive about you know, politics. I, I try to avoid politics yeah. as much as I can. No, me too. Uh, and so po- but, politics has been huge ever since I can remember. Yeah. So I, but I, I do think so because one of the things I was shocked was so when I became, when I became um, an atheist, like I, I'm an atheist. I don't believe yeah. in God. I'm done with the yeah. church. Yeah. All of my Christian friends ghosted me. Like I did not even want. Really? Oh, just, just done. I never heard from them again. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm like, whoa, what do I, so I, I, this is, this is actually why I know about meetup. When I came here, I started meetups because okay. I, I use meetup to find friends in, you know, I'm in Orange County, California, which is very conservative. And I Googled like, how do atheists make friends? Where do I meet people? And, it, and, and a meetup group came up. It was a skeptics meetup group. So I went there and I met some people, Interesting. started going on some dates, made friends and so yeah, that was a, a a a big revelation for me. And one of the things that was surprising to me was I started hearing people in the skeptic atheist community talk about politics with the same words and the same f- excitement and the same and the same passion and the same faith as the Christians I just left. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, guys, you're Right. You're, you're religious about, you know, and it would, you know, it's not, it's maybe, it's, maybe something even more stupid to be well, honest. Yes. I mean, it's that, and this isn't, a, this isn't like, an anything against. Like in a two party system. Yeah, that, no, of that, course. That, of so course. Influence. And, and yeah. I don't even want to make this about politics. Or no, podcast. it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. not about politics, but yeah. it's about the transference yeah. of, yeah. well, this was like, this was the, like, I knew people like be, I, I was still, I was still a Christian in, in a conservative church in the, like the 2008 election. And, you know, most, most, I'm not sure this is true in Mormonism. Most people are Republicans, conservative. Yep. And so the few people in that environment that are Democrats are a little bit more liberal are kind of like a little bit unusual. And I had, there was a pastor who, who said to me one day offhand, he said, Oh, hope and change. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute. That's, yeah. that's not normal in this environment. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, so I'm so later when I started hearing this hope and change thing, I'm like, that nothing against Obama, but hope and change is a religious thing. Yeah, it right. Is, yeah. It's a re- and and these rallies, and I'm yeah. like, wait a minute, I just left this fucking stuff. Yeah. Like I don't want to have any part of. And it's nothing against. Yeah. It's nothing against Democrats or liberals. No. It's nothing. And like I de- I tend to be very progressive myself. Yeah. But it's like. Dude, I don't want to be in another religion, and that's what it looks like yeah, to me. Yeah, it was like I mindless remember. following. I, I I I died laughing. It was a YouTube video with all these celebrities. It was like just this like Sarah McLaughlin music in the background or something. Yeah, and it was literally that. It was you know I felt like a it was like a non denominational church like right pro- yeah propaganda video. Yeah, yeah, like, no, I, I, feel, like, I feel the same way. Uh, and it was all it was just that hope and change, yeah. hope like, and change. And just for my listeners, it's the same with like Trump or Republican. Yeah, exactly. It's no. the it's it's these conventions and Super these tribal, things. It's just, very yeah. tribal, and it, and it is splitting America. And I think you're right. I think when people leave, when they leave what we're taught, what we grew yeah. up in, yeah. they long for something. They latch onto something else. And yeah. if it's not a bowling league or a soccer league or yeah. hunting or fishing or baseball or football, then politics is a natural thing, and it's very easy to slide into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, th- I think it's a lot healthier to be like when you're you play soccer, you yeah do you know hikes which which is healthy for your body but it's also healthy for your mind, mind to get yeah. out and do do no, something i think I, th- I th- yeah i think sunday i think sunday is such a critical vital day of the week and i think personally for me you know and for your listeners you know get out like yeah go hike get get out with nature you know you could even you could almost become religious about nature i feel like that's that's not bad. Yeah. I no, like you can have like a spiritual relation yeah, exactly. or, a, yeah, yeah. or a epiphanies. Oh, you know what? Yeah. You know what else though? I think is also very popular and very much replacing religion is astrology for women, especially. <laughs> yeah. Cause oh it's my like, goodness. It's, yeah. It's, it is like so many, so many single girls in Austin, late twenties, early thirties, you know, about my, probably my dating market. I still live there. Um, I mean, I had girls, I had a girl like literally read horoscopes to see if we, on like our first date, <laughs> if you keep to see if we were compatible. <laughs> no, and you yeah. see on Instagram, they'll, they'll post something like, you know, the sun and Venus, whatever, are at 
mm -hmm. odds and so this is what it means for your life and the universe. yeah this whole like universe so, thing so, so i think people have a longing for this so right? so yeah so i think especially for women they're very much latching on it's like you know even my wife sends it it's just like um this is what the universe wants for you mm -hmm. so it's a lot of it's positive messaging like oprah which, winfrey kind of yeah, stuff yeah right? so, yeah so it's not bad so a lot of I've seen a lot of women that aren't religious anymore hitch their wagon, kind of this universe messaging uh, okay. type stuff, astrology. Because there's that, there's like, like, a, like, like something watching yeah, you. Yeah, you're an Aries, and this yeah. is what the world's gifting you at this mm. time, this month. Oh, that yeah. I I see that as growing, is growing a lot. And like I said, I don't see anything any harm in it. Anything that's giving you a positive motivation for All life right. that's not dogma or the you know it's not a yeah. cult. I think it's I, mean, I think oh, people use it, yeah. that to, to justify what they've already decided they yes. want to do. Yes, and and just people like okay. you know, people like, like having like a fortune cookie, right. you know what I mean? Like right. like, it's like, like, like it's just Hey, like, I think I should date you yeah, and the yeah. star is saying yes, you're yeah. the guy. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, okay. I mean we Makes love sense of comfort. <laughs> we love positive messaging yeah. and if and if it comes from this universe messaging, then you know it, it's if it works and the other thing is you know like i said if there's some sort of positive message out in this world that can keep people from committing heinous acts yeah yeah you know, all for it and uh you know my buddy said something he said he says jesus is the best medicine for like a drug addict mm. you know what i mean a lot yeah, yeah a lot yeah, of people yeah, get yeah, their so, like, testimony about oh, i got yeah. saved and yeah. i never touch alcohol again and awesome like, yeah. like 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 if religion is if religion is pulling you out of that deep dark hole like yeah keep going with it right, right. If, if that's what it, and, and that's that, what it takes if yeah. that situation then i mean go for it you shouldn't be Right? Yeah. It shouldn't be that, but um, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's, everyone's different. Well, Everyone do has do you find, um, so I, I, you've never expressed negativity negativity towards my atheism, but do you find atheism as being nihilistic and and dark in general? Or do you kind of... Yeah. You know, no, I mean, because, because, I mean, if you're agnostic, you're kind of got one foot in the other. Right, I guess 50% sure. of me is yeah. atheist, right? Yeah. I mean, of, of my mindset. I mean, they're, they're, they're like yeah. Well, if you don't act, if you don't actively believe in a god, you're essentially technically an atheist. So, if you're agnostic, what you're saying is there could be like I'm not settled on the question. Like I'm that right. too. So, so you might describe me as an agnostic atheist, and that I'm not saying I I know absolutely there's no god because I think it's yeah. it would be ludicrous for me to say I know for sure because yeah. the quantum physics in the world and no, I, we might live in a construct that might be whatever but i'm pretty atheism, settled atheism has does not bother me yeah. at all i'm I'm just like yeah whatever and, and that's the thing um with when people ask me if i'm anti-mormon i'm like well if i was anti-mormon that means i'm like anti-jew i'm anti this and i'm not you know yeah. i mean mormon fits the same bucket right it's every other religion in my yeah. eyes right yeah, it's yeah. it's and so no, and, 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 I, and, and, and I think, that way too, I, think not being... I think what's really helped though is getting out of Utah. I, th I I think if I still lived in Utah, maybe I would have more of like the ex like the animosity. Uh, because you know you're what I mean? Your... Because I'm still like suffocated by mm. it. But since I'm not there, I think it's a lot more easy for me to be chill. You know? Yeah. And nobody here, no, and nobody's gonna know or care. Oh or yeah, I mean, it, it's even Austin. Every second, I told some of Utah. You know, I was having to like explain all that. It kind, you know, it's kind of fun at first. You know, yeah. I'm like, cool. I'm like this alien species <laughs> to all these new people, especially dating in dating in Austin. Like, like well, I'm you're, unique. You're you know? from Salt Lake City. I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a white dude, but with something you know, like yeah. a little twist to it. You know, whereas every. You know, I guess in the dating pool, they're, you know, you know, if a girl's most... dating a white guy, they'd be like, oh, okay, that's generic frat sure. boy, you know, did this, partied. Yeah. You know, this guy at least, you know, spent two years life in Guatemala. I don't know. Maybe, guess it made me a little interesting. I'm not saying yeah. I'm the, you know, that interesting person. But, um, yeah. And then, so in Austin, I, you know, it, after a year or so, I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't even want to tell people I'm from Utah anymore. I'm like, I am tired of talking tired about. Of well, this is, I get this too. Like, uh, where are you Mormonism. from? Yeah, You're yeah. in Mexico. Where are you yeah, from? Yeah, That's yeah, like, oh, I yeah, don't yeah. want to answer this again. Yeah, I'm yeah, tired yeah, of talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Mormonism. But yeah. Mexico, people don't know about Utah. You know, I wear my I wear my Utah jazz hat 
around a lot or you know i wear my byu shirt to the gym no one's be like oh you're mormon. nobody yeah because they yeah. don't associate mormonism yeah. with utah they just yeah. associate mormonism with mormonism right and so if you're from utah yeah. it's no, nobody yeah. knows anything about it so i never yeah. have to talk about it it's it, yeah. it, it's great um it was hilarious though and i'd wear like a BYU. you know i'm still a byu fan which you know people i guess like anti-mormons have take issue with that. like how do you support the mormon sponsored school i'm like it's just football yeah, right? yeah you're a fan you know what i mean right? like if it's sure. you know and uh you know part of me is proud of my like mormon heritage and all that you know i'm that's great i i, I compartmentalized yeah all that and now, to, we, to, to where it makes sense and what's it, and, your and favorite fine. football team though the professional level uh i don't know i grew up a niners fan because because they're, they're, like, they're yeah, kind of yeah, close yeah, yeah, yeah. west coast and yeah most people in utah are either broncos or Niners fans growing up, just I guess proximity region wise, mm -hmm. and and the big thing with the Niners growing up was Steve Young, the famous Mormon, was yeah. the quarterback. Um, but oh, there was something I was gonna say earlier before I. Um, what were we talking about just before the uh, people asking you in Mexico? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So then, um, so yeah, it just it 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 never comes up. So it's it's uh, it's nice. Yeah. So I've noticed, I mean, I uh, probably because of the circles I travel in, nobody, people always ask me where I'm from, but nobody ever asked me what I believe. Like nobody here ever. Oh, it's very common. If you're from Utah, you're, you're getting the Mormon question yeah, yeah, and yeah. then people, will, people will dance around it, hoping you'll bring out, it's, it's really yeah. funny. They're like, well, I didn't know if I could well, ask I mean, you. Well, the night you and I met, we had this big, we had a big yeah. debate about I mean, I don't remember what even what the discussion was about. Yeah, that's right. You, you, me, and uh, Milton. Yeah, who's a we, who's a Jehovah's Witness? Yeah, Milton has a back, so, so, background. So, so, so we, so we all came so, from these niche religions. Yeah, we were all ex something, and we had yeah, a big discussion. but Milton's still like, no, Milton's still a believer though. Yeah, I don't think he follows. I think but no, he was challenging. He was challenging me about oh. not being a fully Christian anymore. I was like, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm I not. mean, that's like, a he thing. knows I'm an atheist. Well, I'll talk to him if he. And the thing is with Christianity, like. Christmas is awesome. I'll I'll still go along with the Christmas story. Sure. And I think, and one of the thing that was like a, you know, when I was at I was at my work, there was there was plenty of like non Mormons at this other job I had in the early uh, what do you call it, early twenty tens, um, and it's true. They're like they're like Jesus is basically like the adult Santa Claus. Yeah. Right. And and and, and, and it hurts. <laughs> Well, it hurt, it, no, not me. It hurts for like believers to hear that. No, but you know? this is an interesting thing. So I've had Mormon ex Mormons comment on my on my YouTube thing about how weird it is for them to hear me use Mormonism as a tool to show Christians how crazy they are because they know this Mormon history is not true. Like they'll and they in their mind Mormons are this weird bizarre cult. And I'm like, dude, you believe the same stuff. There's Right, minor yeah. variations yeah but the stuff that you're saying is the foundation know, right the, yeah the foundation you believe and the stuff that joseph smith did that you say okay well this isn't historical well the stuff you believe about the early christian church you don't have a historical basis for that you're just believing it because some guy wrote no. it in a book and and actually and this makes a great point mormonism actually should be the greatest tool in the world to fortify your faith in Jesus, because what Mormons believe in is, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament is obviously the testament of Jesus Christ. Quiet doggies. In the old world, you know, Jerusalem. Uh -huh. that, and the Book of Mormon is a like, testament, is the people, prophets living in the Americas, right. basically the Mayans. So Mormons believe like the Mayans and, you know, the people who are in the Americas amongst them there were prophets writing the book of mormon from 400 bc to about 120 ad sorry if i get this wrong more or less i mean you're, people you're close there. Anyways, yeah, yeah yeah so there's people here and it's the book of mormon is a hundred percent testimony of jesus mm -hmm. so it's like adding an additional witness right so the most devout christians really in a way are mormons because now they have two testimonies of jesus from the mayans right basically and you know the other side of the world so you have then they go hand in hand i mean people are like well the mormons hold book of mormon higher no i mean these are two testaments of mm -hmm. jesus basically to establish more of a faith in christ yeah right and so that's a funny thing. They're like, oh you know you believe in joseph smith no no joseph smith 
all of his work was for Jesus, the Book of Mormon. You know, mm -hmm. of course, he got a lot of like credit and women along the way, but uh, it was it was <laughs> that perks yeah, of the job, right? Yeah, exactly, perks of the job, right? Well, I so, mean, I think if the so, world, so, it, so, so, so it's so it's funny when 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 people want to just attack Mormons as not Christians. No, like these people, Mormons are all in. Yeah. on the bible yeah 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 they're, in fact we had to study the bible and... way more than catholics way more than these other sure. guys. i mean we were in and out of the bible and so well do you think if 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 let, let's say the catholic the catholic and mormon church swapped ratios in people would that make the world be a better place do you think or do you think the do you think that at the end of the day the, these hierarchies when they have lots of power and money still do bad things to kids or steal or like, um, it's, like it's just power corrupts yeah. no matter what. Or? I don't know. I think, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you have two institutions that breach a thing. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, per what's even the word per capita, per whatever, per member, you have a lot more devout Mormons than you do Catholics without a doubt. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Mormon communities are great. They're all nice to you. I think, you know, is is thirty nine years old as being a Mormon. Feedback I've gotten wherever I've gone is people have really nice th yeah. things to say about Mormonism. They're like, you believe in crazy shit, but but you're you nice. Know, people. Every Mormon yeah. I've ever met has been really nice. Wow. They're, they're like, they're do do they like obligate you guys to be nice to everybody? <laughs> and I and I <laughs> like, laugh. No, I mean, just, you, no, and honestly, that's yeah. good to hear. I mean, like I said, that's my heritage and and whatever, and and, and it's good to hear that. But yeah, I think it's a a church that demands a lot of its members, a lot of sacrifice. And I think it humbles you as a person when you, as a 13 year old, rather than just playing video games, you're out doing service projects, you mm -hmm. know, at 13 years old on a Tuesday night, we're out shoveling the driveways of everyone that lives in the neighborhood, right? We're yeah. doing, you know, we're doing service. So I think that builds character. It makes mm -hmm. you a little bit more humble. You're not doing things you want to do, but you learn in life as a young Mormon that when you're serving other people, that's what should bring you happiness. So that's yeah. a really cool thing about Mormons. So they're doing that right. A lot of, you know, a lot of things Mormons are doing right. It's just, um, well, just maybe there's wish, a way to get, there I just wish, the... yeah, I just wish there was a different way without, without the, without the, without the theology, yeah, yeah. With, with, without the okay. theology. So I, I, a culture that, you know, does that with, you know, how do you do it though with, with being able to look at the outsiders as equals as you, right? Yeah. And I think that's hard for. Well, and it's harder. To... It's harder to control people when you don't have this overarching. Yeah. I'm 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 higher than you because I have a closer relationship with God, and God tells me to tell you to do these things. And if you don't do these things, you're going to lose out on the rewards. And if yeah. you do them, you will. Yeah. And and so that's that a control. Part. So it's a lot harder to say, hey, you're totally free. Saturday, do whatever you want. But yeah. I kind of like you to help me move move these neighbors and yeah. shovel snow on Sunday or whatever. But you're totally free with no guilt and you can do anything you want. You know, as a 13-year-old. Yeah, what are you going to do at 13, yeah. right? You're going to be like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But luckily, there were, I don't know, in some instances, it was kind of good there was a religious authority to, to do that because no. that, that carries on with you. It's not like, I don't think, like you talked about, you're you're fairly much the same person you were. It's not like you create a whole new identity when you leave religion. You, you take, I think all of us, we take the good that we experience yeah. from that part of our life, compartmentalize it and be like, okay, these were like, this was good, good, good. I'm going to take that with me, with my new, you know, as atheism or as me as agnostic and, yeah. and carry on with that. Because well, and I, you still want to do the things you do with your friends and yeah, you still exactly. want to help and you still want to, and, I don't know. I get pleasure out of being a nice person. So it's yeah. like there's a there's even a selfish factor in it. Is that if right. I can be nice to my friends, I feel good. Yeah. And and it, you know, it re, there's some reciprocation in that. Yeah. I, I think the world would be much better if we moved in that direction, where you can be a good person because you want to be a good person, and it's nice to be a good person, and not because you're worried after you die you're not going to get rewards if you're not a right. nice person, right? And yeah. You're, and you're it's it's so much it's such an easier sales pitch though if you uh, <laughs> if you, you, have, you like get a, the rewards you and, yeah, yeah 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 you get if some you get some actual benefit out of it yeah but it's, so so speaking of that do you mind i i know we're we're starting to go a yeah, little bit let, late let me, let me just curiosity people have had about mormonism I yeah mean, outside okay of there. so so to kind of wrap this up let's let's recap a little bit about um a little bit about what you 
if you were going to give somebody a short takeaway of like, hey, here's my journey, and I'm, and I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think you would say, I'm not telling you to leave Mormonism or leave Christianity or leave the Catholic Church. I, I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is here's, here's things you could think about so that you can make choices in freedom without dogma. Is that a fair is that a fair way to characterize if somebody came to you and said, what should I do, Curtis? Yeah. Oh, man, that's tough. Because um, it's just like varying circumstances, right? You have family mm -hmm. pressure, different things that that weigh on you. I will say this. I, I will say at the end of it, I mean, the first part of the journey is very hard. That's the mm -hmm. hardest part. Um, as you go through it, it's like being liberated though. I mean, it's just like, okay, now there's no limit. Hmm. Now, if like, now if there's this, like this damning thing that comes about the Mormon church, it's not going to hurt me because before when I was faithful, any sort of, you know, uh black guy that came out of Mormon church would like damage my uh, faith okay, and testimony. Sure. Like, oh man, that, that you hurts. Take it personally. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. take it personally. It's so hard. So every blow, would be like so hard and, and you become terrified, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, you're like, well, what, you know, what, if, if it's not this, then what is there? And so yeah. my advice would be like, there's so much more to life and enjoy. And once you can detach your sole purpose being religion, um, there's just, life's awesome. I mean, you can, you can choose your own path yeah. without someone dictating like what you need to do. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's just, you know, and I think that's the point of life. Right. And then I think, and I think people in, in any religion that's, that's maybe intimidating you to stay in or, or, or whatever is that, um, you know, part of Mormonism is they want people like, Oh, come with us an open mind and an open heart. Mm -hmm. And then and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to do that as a Mormon, but the outside world, like, oh, no, 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 not that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, I think just keeping an open mind and open heart can just lead you to a, such a better place, right? Yeah. And then to where this information that comes out about your religion, it, you know, it doesn't feel personal anymore because you freed yourself of that. Is this kind of, do you recognize that there's the man madeness to, to yeah. any religion? And therefore, when flaws point out, well, yeah, because it's their men that make mistakes and yeah exactly they're just people and it's not and and by not self-identifying with that it doesn't affect you where you could just say yeah that's normal for these scandals to happen they happen everywhere right um, and so i think that yeah once you once you just recognize and i think for a lot of people if you study the history whether it's catholicism or you know or any religion you're going to see like, okay, you know, I don't really see how God was a mouthpiece to mm -hmm. create this, right? And I think that's what the way you, angle you have to take within your religion yeah. is like, okay, was God really a helping hand in constructing this whole thing once you deep in, dig in the history? Or was this religion started based upon, you know, like a lot of religions, power, money, you know, women, and, and then you, you know, you, you find out and, and, you know, and all the issues there, so. Yeah, I think just my, I guess, journey since leaving religion, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just more peaceful. It's just, it's just nobody telling me what to do, how to live my life. Um, there's, you're still going to have a lot of struggles. You're still going to have, you know, uh, maybe even more. Well, you're the tough master. time because, you're yeah, the master because, of your fate now, because, right? yeah, because now I don't have this awesome eternal reward, but you know here you can make the most of your life because there's people that really dread their religion but like man well hell if this is what i gotta do for god to reward me then then i then i gotta just suffer through this right. sitting through long sermons sitting mm. through this hang out with people i don't really want to hang out with anymore you know yeah you know what i mean so once you can kind of detach like okay maybe there's not a big reward at the end of this thing, then it, then it becomes a lot easier mm -hmm. to, to, to see your way out of that, that situation, that group. And then, like you said, and you get an extra day of the week, right? And, you know, to, to, and probably more money since, 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 right, since, yeah. <laughs> since most, most churches require, you know, a tithing or a donation. Now you have more money. Now you have more, more freedom. Right. I mean, it, it should, it should excite and, and, you. So, so one of the dangers I think 
it, and I think this is legitimate, is that you you can end up isolating with either if you're single or married or with a girlfriend where you're where you're not doing the community things, you're not doing yeah. potlucks. Yeah. Um, so that is definitely a real danger. And I think uh yeah, like one of one of my encouragements encouragements to people is get out there and do something. Join a club. Yeah, join 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 a join a group of like minded people. I mean I mean, they're there's yeah. all they're always out there. I mean, I, I I came to I came to Guadalajara, didn't really know anybody, and then yeah. you know, fortunately through, and nowadays it's so easy to Facebook groups. I mean, there's so many things playing sports. Yeah. You know, take your interest outside of your house and do it, and you'll mm-hmm. find. I mean, there's there's mountain bike. You know, I like the mountain bike. There's like there's like thirty mountain bike groups in Guadalajara. Right? Yeah, it's kind of. Crazy. I haven't I haven't yeah. I haven't done anything there. There's Are hiking you, groups. Well, I mean, we're in the middle of. We're in the middle of yeah. nowhere, not by the coast, and you can join us scuba yeah. diving group. And learn. I yeah. actually did that right then. COVID hit. Yeah. So, so I mean, but you can do. A I lot, mean, nowadays, sure. you know, in 1980, it would be a lot harder to leave your religious group, but now you have so many different ways to yeah. network and connect with people that now should be easier than ever to get out, right? Right, and 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 set your own destiny, yeah. your own path. Yeah. Now, I, there's one thing I want to talk to you about, which we don't have time tonight, obviously. But that is about leaving the states, coming to Guadalajara, oh, yeah. living in Mexico, and all that entails. So um, maybe in a, in a couple months or something, let's do this again. Hundred percent. If, you, if yeah. you're down, and I and and you know we don't need we don't need to we can maybe lightly touch on religion and those kind of things. Yeah. But I, I more want to focus on leaving behind leaving behind the American politic and the American yeah. the quote the American quote dream and the American. And how coming here, like at least for me, and I think you probably feel the same, coming here was very liberating in that it's cheaper to live. Obviously, yeah. that's one that like just, that helps. But it's but it also for for me it opened my mind to like other cultures and other ideas and, and other ways to live can be as valid or better or maybe just not better or worse, but different, and that's fine. Whereas when you when you're in an insular community, yes. especially among conservatives, that the other those guys, yeah, yeah, that's dangerous, or you're gonna get in trouble, or it's, you're weird, it's you're weird, yeah. or it's bad. He's bizarre. He's running from something. <laughs> yes, like, exactly. It, it's it's like so, all these judgments that thrown on you. And yeah, I would say if I was an active Mormon, I'd probably still stay in Utah because you stay in that social construct. So guys like us and people like us who who get out of religion, we're like. Well, I can go and do anything, right? Yeah. And that's been so cool. Like, you know, no no uh, knock to my friends that have never left, you know, our hometown of Sandy, Utah. But like, <laughs> well, like, they, they, don't know. Know. they don't know. They don't know what they don't know what they don't know. Because and, I'm not, and, I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not right. saying you have to leave and move to Mexico to live life. But I mean, hell, we only get one life. You might as well check some stuff yeah, out. Yeah, right? besides just. And you can always go yeah. back. And that's what I told yeah. my wife. I'm like, look, if I really miss Utah. They'll be waiting there for me. I can always go sure, back, right? Sure. So, but yeah, well, that, 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 that'd be a good, that would be a great. Yeah, I would love to have that. that conversation. All right. Well, um, I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed listening to Curtis, and I did. I mean, this was. Yeah. If nobody ever listens to this on the internet, it was still well worth it. I enjoyed our conversation, yeah. and I comment or message to Michael <laughs> if you want to have yeah. a chat. If anyone out there wants a yeah, and I guide appreciate through your... uh, getting out of Mormonism, whatever I can do to. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there. I'm up. sure there's resources to, and it, and it's yeah, and, and probably it's, better ones than me. But um, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, no. But I think it's good that people ask questions, and yeah. they don't. Then they're not afraid. It's like what you said. You can always go back. Like if you leave, if you leave America and move to Mexico or Guatemala or Germany, you can always go back. And it's the same thing with leaving. If you're a Catholic and you go, yeah. look, I want to take a break from Catholicism, you can, the church isn't going anywhere. You can yeah, go back. Yeah, I was back. And so, honestly, you'll have to as the prodigal son. They'll even be more happy. Yeah. They'll love you. They'll love you more when you'll you come back. A, than you'll, you'll get the fat and calf slaughter yeah, for you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.